I welcome you all to the Topper Stock. So today we have uh, Tarun Patnaik. Uh, he cracked 99 in the last year, and this year he cracked 33. So he is a very rare person. You find uh, because he has cracked the exam in twice. He cracked exam in twice uh, in just two attempts. So you can imagine how quality of preparation he has. So please give him a big hand. So Tarun is here. Now Krishna sir will felicitate Tarun. Hello. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Uh, that's fine. So, I don't know if I've been introduced or not, but uh, I'm Tarun Patnaik. I'm from Rajamandri, native of Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh. I did my B.Tech from IIT Guwahati, Mechanical Engineering, 2016 to 20 batch. Uh, last year uh, was my first attempt. I cleared with 99 rank, and this was my second uh, with the 33rd rank. Currently, I'm an officer trainee in uh, National Academy of Audit and Accounts, Shimla. So I'm in aud Indian Audit and Account Service currently. So that is my brief uh, background. So like every topper's talk, this most probably will be a monologue. But I would love if you have questions from you people because that would make the session more interactive and useful for you. Because I really cannot gauge what the demand of the class is. I tried to make it a very generic topper stock and I'll try to show some pics in between. But if I have questions from you, I'll try to un uh, address that demand and maybe it will be much more useful to you people. So, <clears throat> so now, uh, so every preparation starts with something called strategy. So we hear this a lot, ki aapka strategy batao. I get a lot of questions and everyone asks the topic ki strategy hota kya hai. Like what is a strategy? Strategy batao, strategy batao. Matlab, what is a strategy? Pehle ye batao ki strategy hota kya hai. So what do you do before picking up a book? Is preparation picking up a book and reading it? Is it is that so you just start, haan, aaj, aaj mein preparation shuru kar raham, just go sit there, open up a book and read. Is that it? No. As per me, there's a lot of thing that goes before you start opening a book. So this word which is strategy. This is one of the most important things in your preparation. And it starts before opening your book. Uh, okay. So what constitutes a strategy? There are different parts to a strategy. So what is it? As per me, first thing would be research. Then, resource list. Then, planning. And last, identifying the contours of your preparation. So, when they, when they say research, it starts with the very basic things. As to what is UPSC, why CSC? What is a civil service examination? And wh what is the format of this examination? What are the stages of this examination? Many of you must have known already, I mean, prelims, hota hai, mains, hota hai, baad mein interview, it costs 200 marks, ki 2000 marks. But research goes into much depths. It's about analyzing the trends of the examination. It's about knowing how the examination has been changing in the past years, in the three, four years. It's about reading everything. I opened the notification and read almost like 30 or 40 pages of the notification. Notification may bought sare pages, it almost goes around to 180 or something. But the thing is, you need to pick the important pages of the notification and read it. Syllabus, pele padna hota ek matlab. Prelims ke liye, there char paan sain maximum hai syllabus mein, I think. Very vaguely defined. But mains is very properly defined. Each 
paper ka properly they give 20 30 point pointers of the syllabus and they identify it very uh, specifically so usually people say ki upsc ka syllabus like everything under the sun but is that true i don't think so so these things start with research and it starts with the notification of the uh, examination itself and you see the calendar you see where you are where the toppers are what marks the toppers are scoring so you don't have to identify any uh, you know you don't have to do an extensive research matlab extensive phd in what things are happening but you need to know what the examination is like who are going to clear this examination how many attempts it's going to take to clear the examination what is the average attempts what is the average age then you have a better idea on this examination so once you do this research the base is done and how do you do this research ek to ho gaya notification and now in this era of internet i think youtube google everything every coaching institute ka home page gives you a lot of information on this research and there are number of blogs scora everything read everything under the sun this happens before you actually start your preparation i would advise if you are starting your preparation uh, right after college you should do this in the final year of your college maybe the final last 6 months or something where you know you don't have to sit uh, hours and hours on this but whenever you are you know free or something you can just uh, look up look on upsc and uh, uh, check about things and uh, next the most important after research it will lead to these two things resource list and planning again these are the things that have to be done before you start your preparation by preparation i mean opening the book so first is resource list so why resource list is important why do you think resource list is important so what is a resource list resource list is a list of uh, books you uh, identify that you would prepare during your preparation so you identify that these are the set of the books these are the set of the sources which i would refer during the course of my preparation it is very important because ek to there are so many coaching institutes so many resources so many books so many faltu ka material in the market that it's uh, almost uh, impossible to delineate something and say ki ye main padunga so isliye you need resources because aaj to kuch aur padoge aaj से यूर रीडिंग शेंकर आईज फॉर एनवायरमेंट आई एम टेकिंग एन एग्जाम्पल कि आज पढ़ लिया बट सम अदर यूर फ्रेंड में कमेंट है कि लास्ट फोर ईयर्स में इससे तो क्वेश्चन नहीं आया वाई आर यू स्टडिंग दिस देन यू शिफ्ट टू सम अदर मेटीरियल मे बी सम अदर कोचिंग का मेटीरियल और सम अदर थिंग देन अगेन यू स्पेंड टेन डेज ऑन दैट अगेन कोई आकर बोलेगा कि लास्ट ईयर कोई और सम कोचिंग ए और कोचिंग बी का मेटीरियल से क्वेश्चन दो तीन आए थे देन यू पिक दैट बुक अप देन अगेन यू वेस्ट टेन डेज ऑन इट सो वॉट हैपन्स वेन यू डोंट हैव अ रिसोर्स लिस्ट इज you can't structure your preparation you can't have the planning or you can't have you can't have any other things you can't plan your preparation you can't gauge where you are so resources is very important because in the era of many many sources it is very very important to keep your sources constrained that is how you can move to the next step of revision unless your sources are uh, not confined you'll keep on reading but you'll never revise and you'll never know where you are on your in your preparation stage so that is why resources list is very very important so and uh, how do you prepare this resource list that is also important like how, where do you get this resource list are there any set uh, set of books somewhere where you can find it pick it up and say ki ha ye mera resource list hai no the thing is in resource list preparation you will have two parts one toppers videos the other one syllabus this is the most important document you should know your syllabus as the back of your hand you should know every word of it every page of it and where which subject it belongs to because it, the your resource list is built upon your syllabus without the syllabus you can't have a resource list you don't have a book simply in your resources because some other topper has picked it or not so one you watch your two toppers videos you watch at least 10 15 toppers videos you understand their resources and the most important thing is you need to do it yourself you need to watch those videos and understand why they have their books in their uh, resource list so that is how you could correlate this to the syllabus for example i am picking up nathan singhania for art and culture it's a very famous book it's there in every toppers resource list i should say or almost 90% of the people follow nathan singhania so you can just write it in your resource list and say ki ha main nathan singhania padunga main to sare toppers yahi pad raha padunga but you need to correlate with your syllabus does your syllabus require extensive reading of nitin singhania does it no as far as i am concerned 
only selected cha- chapters of Nitin Singhania are would suffice for art and culture. So you need to understand why people had each book in their resource list and correlate with the syllabus. Correlate each point of your resource list with the syllabus ki ha this resource list corresponds to this item in the syllabus or this item in the syllabus will correspond to these two three items in your resource list. Uh, another example example would be G.C. Leong which I would say like most of the aspirants start geography with G.C. Leong because it's a very small book some 250 pages or something it's concise and lagta hai ki yeh mein lunga. But do you have to read G.C. Leong entirely? Why? Just because it's in your, in your resource list, do you have to read it? Uh, uh, read it. Do you have to do a research on GC Leong? No. Is there a need for it? No. GC Leong, NCRT mein jo bhi syllabus topics hai, wahi GC Leong mein dekh lo and conceptual understanding bada do. That is what you want. Do you need an extensive reading of GC Leong or, all, or memorize all those graphs and uh, uh, other things in GC Leong? No. You don't have to do that. that. So that is why when resource list is important, I say it comes with the understanding of syllabus and watching toppers videos. And you have to do it yourself. Don't copy anyone's resource list. Every re- everyone's resource list is different. People, uh, uh, depending on their comfort, uh, make their own resource list. For example, uh, for economics, I had Sanjeev Verma in my uh, resource list for one simple reason that book is and I didn't have so much time. I didn't have the time to read Ramesh Singh or Vivek Singh, I think the other book in the market. So I didn't have so much time. I had to sacrifice on something. So I thought that I would take a small book, but I would revise it once So that was my strategy and my resources. Just because I had that in my resources, you don't uh, copy paste it. And you should see what led to my selection of that book, like I told you. So my selection led to because I had a constraint of time, I had to manage it efficiently, optimize my time. So that is the reason I picked, I picked that book. So you need to understand these things, do this exercise yourself. And with that, you'll have a very thorough understanding of syllabus which is very important and then it will lead to a resource list and very importantly, very, very importantly, resource list should be rigid. Once you have identified a set of resources, that is your resource list. You won't budge from it unless something miraculous happens like a change of syllabus or something other, uh, unless something like that happens, you won't change your resource list. Why I'm saying because with so many sources in this market is very easy to get distracted, diverted from your resource list. Uh, you know, they say a form of fear of missing out. So you may feel a form of that book I'm not reading, so something else can happen. Maybe you can ask a question. It doesn't matter. You identify the resources based on your research and your understanding. That, those are your resources. Be, be, uh, resources. be very, very, very confident on that. On that part of your preparation. Okay. Next. Uh, I'll show you my resources. So this is my resource list. If uh, anyone wants to take down, so you can take down. So starting with general studies. So art and culture, it's NCRT 11th class ka textbook. And uh, the second one is Nitin Singhania. Again, selected chapters only. There is a reason I had selected chapters only because there is no necessity to read the entirety of Nitin Singhania and memorize every uh, part in that. There is literally no need to do that. So selected chapters, NCRT and history. Of course, NCRT excluding, I think 11th class textbook, themes of world history, kuch hai. Uh, you don't have to read that book. That's so voluminous and uh, you'll have almost nothing from that. It starts from IVC or something. It's, it's so uh, it's so voluminous and I don't think cost benefit analysis of that works. And next, of course, spectrum. And uh, <coughs> next, Nitin Sangwan notes, you'll find this in any uh, bookshop or something. It's a very small note, 15 or 20 page book. Uh, something like that. Uh, for post-independence, that would, suff- uh, that would suffice. For world world history, you can pick any coaching material or any YouTube videos. Uh, you don't have to read uh, voluminous textbooks for that. Uh, so again, cost-benefit analysis. There is no uh, benefit of uh, the cost you're putting. So world history, uh, YouTube video series, utalo, I think 14, 15 videos, ka ek series aata, I think someone, I think kuch aur cost, I don't remember, but some coaching institute, ka, any would do because kuch change hone nahi wala hai. history is not something dynamic. It's the same resources you'd find on the internet and the book. So just uh, uh, look into the YouTube video series, 15 hours, I think 15, 16 hours, ka jo video series, hai, I think that would suffice for world history. Usse zyada karna nahi hai. And ancient and medieval also same. So there is no uh, point putting any hours on it. So ancient medieval you would prepare only during your prelims time. And uske liye R.S. Sharma or Satish Dhawan, NCRT is itna bade bade uh, padne ka. I don't think it is koi zarurat hai. 
यू कैन पिक एनी कोचिंग मटेरियल वैसे भी आई थिंक आजकल फिल्म्स में इफ यू सी क्वेश्चन दे आर वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट और फ्रॉम रैंडम प्लेसेस इन एंशंट इन मडीवल सो मेन स्ट्रीम सोर्सेस में भी नहीं मिलेगा एंड इवन इफ यू रोड रीड दोज बिग सोर्सेस देर यू नीड टू मेमोराइज अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड तो आई आई डोंट थिंक इतना बेनिफिट है उसमें एंड नेक्स्ट जोग्रफी ऑफ कोर्स एन सी आर टी सर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट्स सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व एक्चुअली सो एन सी आर टी सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व जी सी लियांग सेलेक्टेड रीडिंग ओनली जस्ट फॉर कॉन्सेप्चुअल क्लैरिटी एंड देर इज अ यूट्यूब वीडियो सीरीज बाई मिस राज तनल सो दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विच आई फेल्ट शी वॉज वेरी वेरी क्लियर इन एक्सप्लेनिंग जोग्रफी सो आई फेल्ट दैट वेरी हेल्पफुल एटलस ऑब्वियसली एंड uh location uh, location of resources industry you can pick any coaching material everything is the same so you can pick any coaching material and rest of the gs1 you can cover from mock tests and current affairs like society and all you can cover it from mock tests uh, and uh, current affairs and other coaching material so you don't have to pick any resource for it so general studies too of course the bible of polity lakshmikanth and uh, for polity second year as a sixth report is good and for garnance second arc and any coaching material is fine but if you read second arc these reports i think that is the material uh, that is the content you would find in most of the coaching centers coaching materials so i think second arc reports would be fine international relations you can pick any coaching material for basics and matlab uh, ye paper hi aisa hai ki it's more current affairs oriented so as as much limited sources as possible social justice also koi coaching material utha lo it's uh, not a big deal but these are very important for this paper so paper 2 is something very very dynamic it depends a lot on current affairs and other stuff so newspaper editorials especially for polity and governance current affairs same polity governance and uh, even current affairs are very very important for international relations because if you pick out the last 3 4 years uh, previous papers and look at it current affairs mostly international relations questions are on current affairs usse zyada ja hi nahi raha so then budget and economic survey for social justice part and pib prs for uh, uh content on new legislations and uh, other polity aspects so that would be the resources for gs2 and uh, for economy of course the ncert is again ncert is of course for every subject they are very very important for polity i didn't find ncert is very very helpful but uh, if you want to have a look because the questions and prelims have been very uh, basic level so i think uh, uh, looking at ncert is would help but still uh an economy uh, ncert 9 to 12 sanjeev verma and second arc 14th report i think it's on uh, management of resources on something so that would be my resources for gs3 agriculture i covered mostly on mock tests because i couldn't find any uh, excellent or any efficient coaching material on agriculture because everything is very either very voluminous or uh, very vague so mostly i covered from mock tests and i used to write mock tests and based on the mock test answers and the solutions i used to uh, prepare for uh, agriculture both for pre and uh, mains the next environment shankarais is what i referred if you want to change your resource you can uh, i'm not sure how helpful shankarais is these days but uh, uh, anyways like if you want to change you can but uh, most of the coaching materials and shankarais they carry the same material uh not with big changes even with the changes you can't memorize those stuff every uh, single thing so i think you can pick one book and revise it uh, good uh, for internal security i found this book very helpful ashok and uh, vipul so it's a, a good book written by two civil servants one ips and one uh, danips officer i guess so uh, it's a very good book for internal security uh, it's conceptual uh, for conceptual clarity and for addressing the problems or understanding the concerns i think uh, ashok and vipul is very good and for uh, these topics science and technology disaster management you can pick out coaching material uh, see and uh, second year's third report and indian and ndm guidelines are very helpful you can actually quote them in your exams also if you can remember them or uh, or january 2017 yojana has a full cover to cover this thing on disaster management there are some set of 10 or 15 pages work on disaster management so you can read that for understanding but i think it's pretty outdated by now and uh, ethics the thing with ethics is uh, it's a game of keywords so ethics you need to have one book any book lexicon or dk balaji anything for conceptual understanding of ethics then uh, reports 4 and 12 of second arc and uh, uh, this third point which i felt is most helpful during my preparation short note on every word in the syllabus you pick out ethics syllabus 
on every word you make a short note you make a set of examples you give the definition of that word say for example attitude or aptitude you give the definition of attitude you make a two three pointers on attitude you have two three examples for and against the attitude one maybe you can pick out from your personal life also if you want to examples so this i made on every word of the syllabus of the ethics so this i didn't do the first time the first time i got some 106 or something i didn't use the keyword approach and second i developed these three third and fourth i put a lot of concentration on these two points uh, keywords and uh, uh, definition of the uh, definition of every word in the syllabus so it helped me a lot i jumped from 106 to 124 this year so for example i can show see this is a, a list of ethical issues so this is a screen grab of my evernote notes uh, which i made on evernote so you can see i had a list of uh, 16 or 17 ethical issues so i used to use them in this examination every mock test i used to use this on this 16 or 17 ethical issues only but still i had them memorized only a limited number of them uh, so but i made a point that i made uh, use of these for example ethical fading whenever there is a uh, whenever there is you know a case study all the case studies follow the same template where some there is an ethical issue you can follow something called ethical fading where ethics disappear lack of compassion social hypocrisy for example unholy nexus heckler's veto communal peronia faustian bargain so these words you know they help value add your answer you they'll give a different perspective and i had this listed out they're not set of 50 or 60 there are only 15 or 16 of this i had a list of keywords like two or three lists as such and I used to use, use them in my examinations. Very clear cut. Zada kuch karne ka nahi hai, bas list down karlo aur ye use karlo. Make a point ki main case study mein use karunga ya question mein use karunga. Make sure you exhaust all, all this list in your examination. Matlab aisa nahi ki jabardasti kahi bhe bhi gusa raho keyword. But make sure ki you use as many as possible. At least 90% of this. And you can actually use because every case study follows the same template. And in every case study you can actually use any of these words. So this was my uh, resources for gs4 and okay next where was that slide okay so the next part of our strategy was planning i feel this is the most important part of your strategy and this is where i have seen most aspirants fail so again we are talking about strategy again these are the things that have to be done before you start opening your book so planning is you have to have an outline of your entire preparation before you start your preparation you need to have it planned out ki is mahine mein ye subject mein uthaunga so you have it planned out an outline the most important thing about planning is it gives structure to your preparation you now know once you are planned you will know ki where i stand whether I'm going at a higher pace or a lower pace, whether I need to pace up or whether I can slow down or maybe uh, refer a revision, uh, have a, re a second revision or a third revision because it's very important and planning starts from every stage. Pre -preparation, pre, uh, before opening your book, then during your preparation, then during prelims, then during mains and also interview. So planning is charting out your entire preparation and it happens on many levels so you know one is a macro planning which i feel and the other one is micro we'll talk about this micro one later but uh, macro is before you start of your preparation say you're starting in may or june or even july you start planning key july say uh, say maybe until april say or march pura plan kar lunga ki july say march tak Kab kya padunga? So that is planning. And on a macro level, ki ha, is my name is geography, next, next month say history, or next month say art and culture. Yes, you need to actually uh, plan your entire preparation. For example, this, you know, take it with a pinch of salt because that's a COVID year and there are a lot of uncertainties during this year. Even the exam was postponed once I got graduated late. But uh, to show you, this was a uh, plan uh, I made before like i started my preparation august 20 so i made this in july 2020 so i charted out the entire preparation ki ha august mein i'll do ethics september to december i'll do gs1 
वेर प्लान आउट की कब ये क्या करना है एंड देन जी एस टू जी एस थ्री ऑप्शनल एंड प्रिलिम्स रन सो दैट ईयर एग्जाम वॉज सपोज टू बी ऑन जून ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ एंड लेटर इट गॉट पोस्टपोन टू अक्टूबर टेंथ और समथिंग सो दिस इज अ दिस वॉज माई प्लान वेन आई स्टार्टेड प्रिपरेशन सो यू कैन सी दैट इंक्लूडिंग डेट्स कि हाँ लाइक दिस आर यू नो मंथ पूरा हो गया इधर टेन मोर डेज इन जोग्राफी आई थॉट कि सेप्टेम्बर में जोग्राफी कर लूंगा बट इट ओवर शॉर्ट बाई टेन डेज बट स्टिल आई एडजस्टेड इट कि पंद्रह दिसंबर तक हिस्ट्री पढ़ूंगा सो यू कैन सी अब यू नो आई हैड दिस प्रिपरेशन से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन सेप्टेम्बर आई आई अभी मेरे पास रिसोर्सेस जोग्राफी का पढ़ा है चार बुक पढ़ा है उसमें एंड सेप्टेम्बर में ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी डेज आर डन एंड आई रेड ओनली वन और टू टू ऑफ दोज बुक्स सो आई नाउ नो आई नीड टू पेस अप माई प्रिपरेशन अभी मेरे को पता है कि मैं इतना जितना पेस चाहिए सिलेबस कंप्लीट करने के लिए उतना पेस नहीं है मेरे पास और इफ आई से आई कंप्लीटेड थ्री बुक्स एंड इट्स स्टिल सेप्टेम्बर तो आई नो कि मे बी आई कैन रिवाइज अ कपल ऑफ बुक्स एंड देन आई विल गो टू द फोर्थ बुक क्योंकि मेरे पास टाइम है आई कैन स्पेंड मोर टाइम ऑन जोग्राफी मे बी आई कैन रिफर टू अ कपल ऑफ यूट्यूब वीडियोज और मे बी आई कैन रिफर टू एनी अदर कोच और आई कैन गिव एन एक्स्ट्रा मॉक टेस्ट और थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो यू नो it's very important to give a structure when i say structure to this to your preparation this is the structure whether you are not able to complete your syllabus or not you would only know by when you do this planning and this needs to be done before you start your preparation before as i say and uh, most importantly yahi to hota hai like when you come to march you say i only there couple of months left for the prelims or three months left for the prelims and suddenly you realize ki you have couple of subjects left to be read or some 10 15 books left to be read and then you start getting panic so oh, you know course correction ke liye it's better to correct your course here rather than here so you would know you're doing something wrong if you do this and if you don't do this you'll realize only in march or april ki ha mere se nahi ho pa raha hai i need to do something new and by the time it would be too late so when i say planning at a macro level this is it see usually this as i said is not a good example of a plan because it's a covid year and it's a uh, starting in august is very late but if i had to give you an uh, outline of a plan so usually it would be say you're starting in june july and august you focus on optional अगस्त सितंबर, अक्टूबर, नवंबर, मे बी सितंबर यू कैन कंप्लीट जोग्राफी अक्टूबर नवंबर तक हिस्ट्री हिस्ट्री एंड आर्ट एंड कल्चर कैन बी डन नाउ डिसम्बर टू मिड जैन यू कैन कंप्लीट जी एस टू पॉलिटी एंड गार्मेंट्स नाउ मिड जैन टू मिड फेब you can complete economy now mid feb to say start of march first week of march jo bhi bache ka topics like one month isme environment bhi cover kar sakte ho like environment and uh, economy disaster jo bhi topics bache ga isme peripheral topics jo bhi hai disaster management security ye sab kar sakte ho like Uh, this can be done uh, like this would be an ideal plan for me but it depends on a lot because if you are taking coaching for optional it may move down to a lower place or an upper place or maybe you want to lead subjects parallelly because i have devoted entire month for geography some people may not be comfortable with that some people might be like i'll be reading geography and history per in parallel so that i don't get bored of that subject or something and you can you know this is not this is only notional you can just adjust as per your Thing, but you know this would be an ideal plan for me and if i'm starting in june i think by the end of march so by the first week of march so you'll have entire march april and may to do your prelims run so before you start your prelims run you'll have your entire syllabus completed if you follow this plan and if you have this planning and not you're not able to uh, complete your syllabus you can just pace up or uh it just as per according to you you can actually move these things to after prelims uh phase and actually cover the syllabus that is there for prelims so in this i did not you know by history i mean only spec, uh, only mains wala part and same goes with other subjects also because for prelims we are going to concentrate only after march so when i say preparation 
is starting in uh, June. It means I'm starting my mains preparation here without any concern for prelims, without any mock test for prelims, without anything. I did not solve one MCQ from this part to this part until I started my prelims run. So the next part of so strategy may teen cheese cover okay, Amara. Planning, resource list, and first order research. And last one are these miscellaneous topics which you know you have to identify the broad broad contours of your preparation, like optional, say. How do you select your optional? Which optional you want to select? Or see for an optional, Madhub, I was asked to speak for uh, some 15-20 minutes on optional, which I'll take it at the end of the session. But broadly, optional ke liye identify kaise karna hai usually the same old techniques where you read the syllabus of all the optionals pehle and you eliminate out of 20 or all, all optionals. You can easily eliminate 15 optionals which you are not comfortable with once you read the syllabus. So, and then if you prioritize maybe 5 or 6 bachenge, which you want to take unless you don't want to take your graduation subject. And then again you can read syllabus in detail and then look at the previous year question papers. Fir se do teen hat jayenge isme. So you'll be left with maybe two or three optionals. Say I was left with anthropology and sociology once. I did these two exercises. And uh, then usme, like then you choose based on your resource availability or whether you want to take coaching or not, or whether you want uh, the volume of the syllabus. So I didn't have time as I started in August 2020. So dab mein start kiya tha, I didn't know ki exam postpone ga. I thought I had only a limited eight, nine months of time. So I thought I, would, I had to sacrifice this optional. So I picked anthropology because it has a very limited syllabus and uh, SIA ki matlab do mahine achche se padh lo to ho jayega wo do dai mahine matlab at least you can do a basic attempt if you read for two two months isliye main anthropology uthaya tha so so many factors so identifying contours mein ek optional selection ho jayega and this also you do before you start your start of your preparation and then note making karna kaise hai so this is also a very basic question which you which I get from a lot of aspirants ki digital banana hai physical banana hai kaise banana hai book mein banana hai paper mein banana hai so, it depends a lot on your comfort. Ki note making usually, uh, I do it in a physical mode because you know I'm more of a physical person rather than a digital person. So usually digital notes also help. You can actually search in them. You can actually add notes, make add notes in places or delete something, uh, make them bold, italics, whatever you want. But usually I'm a physical person and I used to make notes on A4 sheets. So I used to have a stick file and have an A4 sheet and I identified that I thought that we can have proper books but A4 sheets are much more comfortable in a way if you want to add something you can just put it in the stick file or if you want to remove something if you feel it's too voluminous or something you can just remove the note out of it or you can add something that's in that way I felt A4 sheets much more comfortable but if you want to do it in the physical books it's fine because but note making is important because uh, once you revise your resource list and make notes out of them, you don't go to your main books again. Your notes become your resource list because you have written it in such a way that you would just revise your notes and it would suffice. So note making in that sense is very important. And uh, how to make notes is also one question. Ki kya matlab padke simultaneously likna hai ya kaise karna hai? Do you have to read once and then write notes? Usually I used to follow a uh, two reading approach where I would do a first reading, you know, skimming through the pages of a textbook, say I'd, I would pick out two chapters and then just given a reading of those two chapters very quickly and then I used to go back, now open my A4 sheets, get to my A4 sheets, then I used to do a second reading of these chapters and then while making these second reading I used to make notes. The problem is I tried making notes in the first reading itself. But what happens is when you start reading, start making notes in your first reading itself, what happens is you start reproducing the textbook itself. But that is not the point of the notes. You don't reproduce your textbook because you already have textbooks for that. So the notes is you understand what's written in the textbook and then write it in your uh, own words or own understanding or whatever. So notes are a kind of, I could say, they are a, you know, a raw product of your main answer. So your main answer stems from the way you write your notes. So if you're going to reproduce the textbook, that's really not going to help. 
So, this, the reading with two or three chapters at once and then forming an understanding and then writing is you, you'll you'll know what comes in the next chapter you can you will be able to link with that. It's very helpful with especially papers like uh, geography and all where you know the next chapter immediately links with the present chapter. So, with the uh, subjects like that. So, you can have a reading of two three chapters at, at once and then start making notes from then and your notes should be concise and uh, they don't have to be neat. So, if you would, if you are able to understand your notes, they are good notes. Bus. Aapko samaj mein aara hai, bus. Kaafi hai. You don't, your roommates or your friends, they don't have to understand your notes. That's not the point of it. And then, uh, and the notes, don't try to be pretty in your notes. Like, don't spend too much amount of time. Just spend that amount of time that you would require to write it in your own understanding. Don't, if you want to, you, if you, if you like, like those aesthetic aspects, you can use different kinds of pens, black, blue, green, whatever have stick notes and everything but I prefer one blue pen and writing those notes because I would understand it that way and I wouldn't waste any much time on you know beautification of my notes because that's not the point of the preparation the whole point is just getting the gist of the textbook in your notes so usually to translate say for geography I had a I had two stick notes uh, with each one or six pages, I think, like both sides, like which means 53 sheets, something. And I think the second book had 120 pages, like 60 sheets. So you can see the NCRT is GC Leong and the other coaching material or Atlas, whatever combined. I had consolidated that into a set of what 240 pages of A4 sheets. So that was my only resource for geography now. Because I'm not going to go back to the textbook unless I have some specific doubt or I have a factual mistake. So this should be the uh, uh, efficiency you need to be aspiring for because reading 240 pages in the next revision for geography is pretty pretty easy rather than referring four textbooks and one reference note. Okay, so that would be for uh, note making. So most important thing as I said, ki these replace your books. They are books from now on. So while preparing notes, uh, another one. There are no separate notes for prelims or mains from my side. So I had only one single note for both prelims, mains, whatever the test it is. I had only one single note, one single format of notes itself. So, agar banana hai to banalo, but I feel it's a time waste having a separate note for prelims and mains. It involves a lot of repetition. There's nothing different from prelims and mains. The core subject is the same, just the format differs. So, uh, in that sense, I think you don't need to have separate team, but ha. Huh. And next you need to hmm, knowing what to read. So TK resource list, list be samaj mein aagaya, syllabus bhi pata hai kya hai. And you're making notes, you're all ready. Now what to read from a particular book? Do you have to memorize the facts? Do you have to read everything? Do you have to understand the concept? So there are a lot of questions which usually comes to the minds of aspirants. So what I usually say is play to your strengths. So identify your strengths. The whole point of this exercise of preparation is maximizing your score in the final papers. Final jabbi mains likoge usme aapka score maximize karna chahiye. Like for example I was very bad at remembering uh, dates in history and it happens with many of us also. I didn't spend any time memorizing that stuff. I just used to remember the concept, remember the story and find ways to bypass your weakness. Play to your strengths. I am very good at conceptual understanding. So I was sure that geography ka jab bhi question aega, I used to put entire conceptual understanding in my note and also in my question paper. So how do you know what to read? First thing you pick up your previous question answers which are a very very good resource, very, very important resource where you would know ki haan textbook mein ye part padna hai, ye part nahi padna hai. And there are many useless aspects in NCRT also or in the reference books also you need to understand. For example, GC Leong, you don't have to go through an entirety of it. You would just pick out, pick up the previous uh, papers and the syllabus. You would understand that GC Leong is not going to be part of So, whatever you can cover in 20 days you can boil it down and do it in say one week or so. It saves time and it saves time, it saves your energy. And of course, your preparation becomes much more efficient. And that is the whole point of this. 
एंड डेटा भी ऐड करना है कि नहीं करना है नोट्स में दैट्स ऑल्सो ए क्वेश्चन यूजली आई एम नॉट अ बिग फैन ऑफ डेटा सो इवन इफ यू लुक एट माई प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन मॉक टेस्ट आंसर पेपर सो समथिंग आई एम वेरी पुअर एट डेटा सो अगेन आई प्लेड टू माई स्ट्रेंथ्स सो आई एम नॉट वेरी गुड एट डेटा सो आई थॉट का इट्स किप डेटा I wouldn't waste time in trying to memorize the data or force it into my answers. नहीं करना है. You don't force anything. What comes natural to you comes natural to you. Data didn't come natural to me, so I was like, नहीं data तो नहीं touch करूँगा मैं. If it comes natural, अगर कुछ hard and fast data है, जैसे census data है और जो भी मतलब common data in CRT में मिल जाएगा, that I incorporated in my notes. अगर नहीं है तो हमारे पास नहीं है. I don't have to fret about it. So this identifying this would be. the start of your preparation and as as i said before opening your book it's elf you do this exercise this entirety so it will take a lot of time it will take at least 10 15 days for you to arrive at all these things arrive at your resource list uh, do your research arrive at a good note making practice you'll make a lot of mis mistakes you'll learn from it but still this exercise is very 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 important because it makes you very confident for the next 9 months of your preparation you don't have to depend on anyone next 9 months you don't have to go running to any person or anyone saying ki mere ko ye chahiye wo chahiye wo chahiye and mere ko ye samajh mein aa raha you don't have to do that you did all this exercise you know what the toppers have done you know what your strengths are you know what are you doing so you don't have to go running or uh, waste time and you can actually very peacefully concentrate on your preparation and see whether you are uh, achieving your targets or not so book kholne se pehle hi you need to know ki कौन सा बुक खोलना है क्यों खोलना है कैसे पढ़ना है सो यू आइडेंटिफाई दीज एस्पेक्ट क्रिएट दैट ग्राउंड वर्क एंड देन गो टू योर प्रिपरेशन एंड बाई प्रिपरेशन ऐसे प्रिपरेशन फॉर मेन्स वेन यू स्टार्ट योर प्रिपरेशन इट इज प्रिपरेशन फॉर मेन्स बिकॉज दैट इज वेर यू हैव टू स्कोर प्रिलिम्स में यू कैन स्कोर वन ट्वेंटी नो वन केयर्स यू नीड टू जस्ट गेट ओवर द कट ऑफ गेम पूरा है मेन्स में नॉट इन इंटरव्यू नॉट इन प्रिलिम्स इफ यू हैव इन ऑफ स्कोर इन मेन्स इवन इफ यू गेट वेरी लेस इन इंटरव्यू यू विल इजिली गेट ओवर द लाइन एंड सेम विद प्रिलिम्स प्रिलिम्स में एक सौ दस एक सौ बीस आने का कोई जरूरत नहीं है इफ यू सी द पैटर्न द कट ऑफ इज गोइंग वॉट एटीज दिस इयर वॉट इट वॉज मे बी मिड एटीज और इवन लोअर एटीज सो यू डोंट हैव टू गेट इवन ट्रिपल डिजिट्स नाउ अर्लियर इट यूज टू बी वन नॉट फाइव टू बी द कट ऑफ वन नॉट टेन यूज टू बी द सेफ स्कोर बट अभी करना क्या है अभी यू गेट नाइनटी फाइव इट्स अ वेरी वेरी सेफ स्कोर एंड नाइनटी इज ऑल्सो सेफ स्कोर अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस ईयर पेपर टू मी सो ज्यादा टाइम प्रिलिम्स पे नहीं वेस्ट करना है यू स्पेंड द एग्जैक्ट अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम विच यू हैव टू स्पेंड ऑन प्रिलिम्स सेम गोज फॉर इंटरव्यू सो योर द डे यू स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग यू फोकस ऑन दिस सो वॉट सो पहले लेट्स आई सेट की प्लानिंग में दूसरा पार्ट है माइक्रो प्लानिंग सो दैट कम्स हियर so micro planning is you know the timeline you had your plan you have the book list the resource list and now break it down so i know i have one month one one month to spend on geography i have 6 to 12 ncrts i have gc leon and some additional coaching material to prepare break it down one week first week 6 7 एथ एंड इवन मे बी नाइन्थ एन सी आर टी कम्प्लीट करूंगा सेकेंड वीक टेन इलेवेंथ इलेवेंथ का दो पार्ट मे बी ट्वेल्थ का फर्स्ट पार्ट थर्ड वीक ट्वेल्थ का सेकेंड पार्ट भी कम्प्लीट कर लूंगा जी सी लियोंग भी कम्प्लीट कर लूंगा फोर्थ वीक आई कम्प्लीट दिस कोचिंग मटीरियल अगेन एज यू कैन सी दिस गेट्स ब्रोकन डाउन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू माइक्रो प्लानिंग सो यू नाउ हैव अ वीकली टारगेट सो एंटायर सिलेबस जो आपका था कि मतलब पूरा सिलेबस मेरे को नाइन मंथ्स में कंप्लीट करना है यू हैव ब्रोकन डाउन इनटू वीकली टारगेट्स आपको पता था कि फर्स्ट वीक में अगर ये कंप्लीट कर पा रहे हो इफ आर एबल टू कंप्लीट दिस एनसीईआरटी इन द फर्स्ट वीक और दिस इन द सेकंड वीक यू नो यू आर अल्टीमेटली गोइंग टू कंप्लीट योर सिलेबस एट द एंड ऑफ नाइन मंथ्स एंड दैट इज व्हाट इंपॉर्टेंट टारगेटिंग माइक्रो टारगेटिंग यू आर टारगेटिंग दोस वीक्स एंड देन आई यूज्ड टू ब्रेक डाउन दिस इनटू डेज मंडे ट्यूसडे वेडनेसडे थर्सडे monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday now you break down that ncrt 6 to jo bhi 9th ka ncrt tha first week ka abhi break down karo 6 7 first week mein ho jayega 8 also first week mein 9 you can also complete 10th you are moving ahead of your target and that's not 
and this is not very ambitious or something you can easily complete 6th and 7th ncrts in one day bahut chota hai like some 10 or 15 pages and this is also you can complete 9th ncrt or something in one day it's very easy and now you know it's it's not that difficult to complete your syllabus which is the major problem of most of the aspirants and i would say 90% of the aspirants end up do not completing their syllabus at the end of 9 months and when the prelims run comes actually they get pressured or uh, into not completing so when you do this now you know monday agar mera ho raha tuesday ho raha wednesday ho raha thursday ho raha you're going to complete it you you now break it for subjects like history which i felt i which i'm not very comfortable i won't say boring but i'm not very comfortable with studying history so i used to break down this into hourly targets aaj spectrum mein 30 page padhna hai to i used to break this into hourly targets like 6 hours ka study aur kar raha hu to ek hour mein 5 page padh ke 5 page notes bhi banana hai mereko and this if you want you can also break in subjects like art and culture you can break down break it down into 15 minute targets also break this into four parts and five pages four parts 1.25 page per 15 minutes you read and write your notes so itna micro targeting karne ke baad it becomes very easy to achieve these targets because you know abhi 15 minute mein ek page padunga next fir se ek next fir se ek you don't have to think about the bigger picture because you already have thought about it and you broke it down now you have only this left now by you have very short targets left on your mind and this comes the very important parts jab ye daily targetings honge you won't have the questions ki matlab which you get from a lot of aspirants ki din mein kitne ghante padhna hai there is no set thing mera goal yahi tha ki ye daily target complete karna hai agar 6 ghante mein ho gaya bahut badhiya agar nahi nahi hua to 9 ghante baithna padega us pe i'll have to spend 9 hours on this nahi hua to agar hua 6 hours mein well and good i'll take rest for the next 2 3 hours because i know i have completed my target and the next targets are also in line So if I didn't complete this target, you know, I, I maybe, I'd go. I sometimes hota hai like you can't achieve your target every day, because of course these you have planned when you are in a, when you have start be, before you started your preparation, you planned this before you even picked up the book. How did I know that geography one month will be done? I didn't know. I just planned it. Maybe it won't be done. Maybe I, I might have planned that history one month will be completed. But there is not a single possibility that art and culture and history one month will be completed. So still. this might go up and down every day is a battle so every day your battle is to achieve that target you might win some you might lose some but at the end of the day your job your target is to win the war not the battle you might lose some battles what happens you didn't complete your target on wednesday you might have an extra work on thursday or maybe sacrifice your sunday for that thing but the thing is you now know whether you are going according to your plan or not whether your preparation is right or not so this micro planning is very important and these daily uh, these daily targets they give you motivation they once you start achieving your daily targets ki ha ek hafte maine sahi se achieve kar liya you know the confidence which you get ki ha main exam clear kar dunga is different and you know ki ha i'm going in the right direction when i say structure to the preparation in planning you know it gives every stage planning is important so it gives this structure for example so this is a micro level plan which i made for art and culture so you could see the level of targeting i put ki ncrt do din then chapter 1 and 2 of nitin singhania then two ka jo bacha hai 5 and 6 7 12 13 14 16 and a2 i think 16th is a sunday that's why i might have left it blank and then i'll read coaching material so you can see this this is the level of micro targeting which i used to do at the start of every month बिकॉज एवरी मंथ मेरे को पता है कि ये पढ़ना है सो आई शू डू दिस एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द मंथ की ये वीक ये पढ़ना है एंड एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द वीक आई टू मेक दिस लेवल ऑफ टारगेटिंग कि हाँ इस वीक का ये नितिन सिंह ने एन सी आर टी कम्प्लीट करना इज आर गोल एंड दैट इज नाउ स्प्रेड इन टू फाइव डेज और सिक्स डेज सो दिस इज द लेवल ऑफ माइक्रो प्लानिंग विच यू नीड टू मेक विच आई मेड इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन मेक इट इफ यू थिंक इट्स गुड बट आई फील दिस वेरी हेल्पफुल इंस्टेड ऑफ टारगेटिंग की मेरे को दिन में नौ घंटे पढ़ना है या आठ घंटे पढ़ना है विच यू नो बिकम्स वेक सो इट्स नॉट अबाउट हाउ मेनी आर्स यू पुट बट हाउ मच वर्क डिड यू डू इन दोस एट आर्स और सेवन आर्स द एफिशियंसी इज मच मोर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई थिंक इट कम्स विद दिस रा दैन हैविंग अ टाइम लाइन अप्रोच हैव अ माइल्स टाइन अप माइल स्टोन अप्रोच लाइक दिस विच एक्चुअली वर्कस सो next part of mains preparation you started preparing 
the most important aspect of means preparation is answer writing. I cannot emphasize how important this is and how important this has been in my preparation. I cannot really emphasize. It has been like it's the most important part of any aspirant's preparation. Ultimately, you're going to be judged on what 20 answers you have put on that three hour window on that day. So your entire preparation cycle is concentrated on this, how to write your answers. But I would say this is the path that has been neglected the most by many, many aspirants because, you know, you procrastinate because you feel underconfident. At the start of your preparation, you feel that I don't have content that I can write an answer. But that is not the case. Even in answer writing, you know, you can have it in different phases. So what I did was, the day you started your preparation, I started my preparation on August 1st. So five days after my preparation, from 5th or 6th August, I think, I started writing one answer a day. Now, where do you find that content? Five days in your preparation, you won't have any content to write answers. Which subject would you pick? Pick random current affairs. You know, every, I think, insights, I think one coaching institute, which has a daily initiative, secure or something. So I used to follow that. The thing is, they have one question based on that editorial of that day or the previous day. So newspaper to padogi, obviously. So to liki sakto. You don't have to write fabulous answers. First day, you'll have very bad answers. I used to have very, very, very bad answers. By the UPSC wala booklet, uh, mains booklet format ka ek answer writing at ye blank sheet aata, like some 300 pages book or something. So by that, I bought that and I started answer on day five of my preparation. I would say day one of your preparation, you need to start writing answers. Because you have been never exposed to that level of answer writing, be it in your graduation or anything. You can't, you know, imagine writing a three, in three hours, writing a 50 page paper. It's very difficult. And you're entirely going to be judged on this, not how good your notes is or how good you have prepared on how good you have written. That is where you have judged. So you need to put more focus on this. So my strategy was day five of my preparation. I started writing one answer per day. One answer per day in a timed way. I used to time it. I used to have a stopwatch. And uh, if it's a 10 mark question, I think at the initial stage, I used to hit nine minute mark. I used to complete a 10 marker in nine minutes and a 15 marker in 12 or 13 minutes. So this used to be my initial targets. So initial, uh, what I uh, written and then I used to do, I did this for 50 to 60 days. You know, writing one or two answers daily for 50 to 60 days and say after two months or after say, say 50 is the benchmark, after saying 50 or 60 answers, you would uh, have a bit of maturity in your writing. You know, maybe this nine minute would come to say seven and a half minute. This 12 would come to say 11 minutes or 11 and a half. So, you know, you need to, you will realize key you're starting to improve your time game, which you're reducing the time you have taken for your answer. And two, you're getting comfortable with picking a pen and writing an answer. You're looking at the question, you're understanding the game, you're writing this answer. And after this 50 and 60 days, you are ready to go a three hour test. And then you can start your mock test. So again, mock test, you would start two months into your preparation or two and a half months into your preparation. And now, okay, now you have written the daily answer one. And how do you evaluate it? Do you have to go to, a, go to someone? Do you have a peer evaluation? Uh, do you do it by yourself? I would suggest do it by yourself. You know, it seems very difficult in the initial stages doing it by yourself because you would feel underconfident. You know, ek, you call that imposter syndrome. Ki, haan, mere ko, I don't, I don't think ki I might be able to judge an answer. Itna expertise mere paas nahi hai. Yo, in the, the thing is 50, 60 days may you're not judging your answer on content, but on the structure because you won't have enough content to write any answer in the first 50, 60 days. You'd write very bad answers. So you don't have to go to an expert for it. Now take a topper's uh, answer sheets which you would find on any coaching website. Even on vision website you will find a lot of uh, topper answer copies. And then pick your answer. Now evaluate based on those structure. 
maybe they'll fo uh, fo uh, follow one different kind of structure you are maybe writing it in paragraphs or you are writing a bigger introductions or bigger conclusions whereas the focus is on this part of the answer which is the body and stuff like that so these things you need to identify i used to uh, in that upsc sheet which you know comes like this so this would be the question and this space for every day i used to spend 15 minutes on writing the answer and 10 minutes on analyzing it so 30 minutes would be my total answer writing wala uh, slot in a day's preparation and here i used to note the time ki ha aaj 9 minutes laga tha and here i used to write the comments ki ha ek bar fir se question padha maine i could have written these things maybe as an extra and these things might be too boring in this question or maybe answer, some topper has structured some other question in a different way either you can pick up previous question or you can pick up current affairs question or anything but you know ki ek question aisa hai to matlab you could have written structured it in a better way so for the first 50 or 60 days that is your goal your answer structure should improve that would lead to the three r test which you would be writing after two months so from an amateur beginner level maybe you are moving to an amateur level after 50 or 60 days of doing this but once you do this you get comfortable you get confident you would know ki ha answer me likh pa raha answers and if you do this at the initial stage of your preparation i can guarantee you you are ahead of 90% of the aspirants already that too without any content because 50 answers i would assure you someone with a fourth or fifth attempt also who may not have written 50 or 60 answers i know there are many people like that and once you do that you are already ahead of the 90% all you have to do is build up on the content which you will anyways are going to do because it's as per your plan so the start of your preparation after two months as i said uh you do this now after 60 days so as per your plan you might have completed geography or even maybe art and culture as per your plan or if you are starting with optional you might have completed two thirds of your optional or maybe half like whatever your plan is now the ultimate goal is to prepare for the 3 hours during the examination so now you write your mocks 3 hour mocks 20 questions wala proper 3 hour test you can start attempting those tests now so my schedule used to be every two weeks on the saturday i used to give two mocks on the same day itself like the upsc model 9 to 12 2 to 5 that is because see giving a mock if you uh, give a mock you would understand ki giving a mock is a lot of physical and mental strain it's very difficult to maintain a consistent uh, focus on your answer sheet for 3 hours writing 50 pages and then turn around in 2 hours have your lunch come back and again focus on 3 hours in the next paper this part is very difficult so the, you have to be prepared for this as early as possible and this i used to do it in the second month of my preparation starting from the second month every two weeks two mock tests you would say ki matlab milega kaha ya mocks maybe if you have written geography and you have taken a version test series there is a ba basic test also and maybe you can take another coaching institute ke andar test series and give their basic test of geography matlab do theek hai ek mahine pehle pehle pad chuke hote you may not remember everything but still the point of giving doing this exercise is you may not be able to revise geography one day before your final geography exam also gs1 exam also you may be pick up pick, picking up history or some other thing so the thing is conceptual clarity hai because we have already done our one month ka exercise on geography and now it's it's our turn to put it on paper and that is why we do this exercise you can start with this so usually you can do it on you are on where you can give one mock every week and say four mocks over the course of the month or two mocks every two weeks and have it in this format which i would advise you to do it in this format because this is very challenging once you sit for the first time i sat i felt very very tired and it's very difficult to maintain this mental strength for the entirety of uh, entirety of 6 hours because you would easily lose focus you would easily you know get zoned out in the middle of the examination there are many things that could happen because but those uh, 
weaknesses you have to iron out in the initial start of initial stage of a preparation rather than the final stage so you need to identify these problems target them work upon them in say september or october rather than in march where the valuable time is lost so by the end of this exercise you can do this for the uh, till the end of feb like till you start your prelims ka uh, preparation which usually starts in may uh, march for most of the students considering the examination is in the last week of may so once you do this even for optional you can follow the same format so by march you would be more or less 80% ready for mains that is before prelims itself you are ready for mains you are ready for the final examination the baki 20% you you would cover in your mains run which comes after prelims but before prelims itself you are ready for the ultimate test so this is the level of preparation or the uh, thing you need to achieve like before prelims you need to be ready for mains because that is the ultimate game it doesn't matter how much you score in prelims unless you uh, as as long as you are clearing the cutoff it only matters how much you are going to score in mains that is why and this entire period of june to march like first week of march i did not pick a single mcq also not the previous question not any prelims test not any open test not any abhyas abhyas usually starts around last week of jan still i did not give it i just registered for it but i did not give it because i wanted to focus only on mains which is the most important part so this answer rating i would say this has been my plan so you can also compare it. you can also have your own plans if this doesn't work for you but usually as rigorous answer rating as possible you need to do and next is attempting the paper mains may bahut important very crucial how to attempt a paper this question you have 3 hours time you have 7 minutes to write a 10 marker and 10 minutes to write a 15 marker abhi ek question attempting kaise karna hai how do you actually start writing the paper first automate some things you don't have time to think about a, you don't have to time to read think a question form a structure and then write an answer nahi इतना करने का टाइम नहीं होता है द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट सीइंग द क्वेश्चन इज द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग द आंसर एंड यू थिंक अबाउट योर बॉडी वाइल यू आर राइटिंग योर इंट्रोडक्शन बट इंट्रोडक्शन सोचने के लिए टाइम नहीं है सो ऑटोमेट दैट प्रोसेस इंट्रोडक्शन फॉर मी इन 90% ऑफ माय क्वेश्चंस हैज बीन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द कीवर्ड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सोचना नहीं है इंट्रोडक्शन में लिखना क्या है फाइंड आउट द कीवर्ड उसका डेफिनेशन लिखो एंड व्हेन यू आर राइटिंग द डेफिनेशन बॉडी का सोचो क्या क्या पॉइंट्स लिख सकता हूं सो दैट वे यू कैन सेव एटलीस्ट थर्टी सेकेंड्स एंड अभी आंसर का स्ट्रक्चर कैसे सोचना है वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आंसर अगेन यू डोंट स्टॉप ऑफ द इंट्रोडक्शन उसका भी ऑटोमेटेड प्रोसेस है फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल दो आई डोंट नो इफ यू कैन रीड इट इट्स वेरी ब्लड ऑल दो द प्रोविजन ऑफ इशूंग ऑर्डिनेंस असरपेशन ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव पावर विद एग्जीक्यूटिव बहुत सेंटर एंड स्टेट्स इन इंडिया हैव Unrestrained, I have taken unrestrained course, recourse to it. So I start the question. So my co dig gaya ordinance is the keyword. Ordinance ka article code kar diya. Now abhi the answer to the question, the answer to the question lies in the question itself. You can see I have underlined usurpation of executive power and unrestrained recourses. So my first side heading in my answer would be usurpation of legislative power. in the second side heading understand recourse to understand course to ordinances structure ka bhi sochna nahi hai the structure lies in the question itself very important why do you have to think about what to write in this ki likhna kya hai kya karna hai kaise karna hai nahi answer mein hai you can pick any question in this mains or last year mains or anything i can give you the structure from the question itself <coughs> the question itself says you what to uh, what to write and this has two advantages one you are saving time you're not spending any time on thinking the question your hand won't stop at any point of time you just look at it and you say ki ha main likh raha hu yaar ordinance likh liya definition likh liya you have the assertion of legislative power you have two side headings you have structure defined conclusion to pata hi hai kya likhna hai and by this you are addressing the demand of the question 
विच इज द मेजर कंफ्यूजन वाइल अटेम्प्टिंग ए क्वेश्चन की वॉट इज द डिमांड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन और हाउ डू आई नो वेदर आई एम एड्रेसिंग द डिमांड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन और नॉट दिस इज हाउ यू नो यू आर यूजिंग द वेरी क्वेश्चन डिस्कस दिया है यू हैव टू डिस्कस दैट स्टेटमेंट यू आर यूजिंग द वेरी स्टेटमेंट्स इन द क्वेश्चन फॉर योर साइड हेडिंग्स सो यू नो डिमांड तो यही है पूछा तो यही है क्वेश्चन में आई एंड ये सारे पॉइंट्स जो बाद में आएंगे अंडर दिस साइड हेडिंग दे विल ऑब्वियसली स्टिक टू दिस पॉइंट बिकॉज वंस यू हैव मेड योर स्ट्रक्चर इन योर राइटिंग दिस पॉइंट यू विल ऑब्वियसली रिलेटेड टू दिस विच रिलेट्स टू द क्वेश्चन तो यही करना है यू हैज टू एडवांटेज यूर सेविंग द टाइम एंड टू यू आर एड्रेसिंग द डिमांड जो मेजर मेजर था आंसर राइटिंग का इज एड्रेसिंग द डिमांड यू कैन बी क्रिएटिव इन हैविंग योर साइड हेडिंग्स यू कैन हैव सम इनोवेटिव आंसर राइटिंग स्किल्स बट आई एम नॉट अ वेरी क्रिएटिव पर्सन फॉर मी द होल एक्सरसाइज आई वॉन्टेड टू मेक इट ऑटोमेटेड और मैकेनिकल आई वॉन्टेड टू राइट द मूवमेंट आई सी द क्वेश्चन आई वॉन्टेड टू राइट द आंसर सो दैट इज वाई आई हैव डेवलप्ड दिस एक्सरसाइज then that's what happens the second side heading bhi ho gaya niche conclusion aa gaya bas and this model i i seen on average getting 3.5 marks per question even if i don't know how to answer that question just because i'm answering the demand and kuch bhi vague likh raha hu niche there are not some big points or something there are not some rocket science or something there are the very points which you have read maybe i have structured it a better or presented it in a better way because i derived the very thing from the question itself so one thing uh, of attempting the paper and the second thing is time management so my time management in a mains paper has been very robust and iron clad for every 10 marker 7 minutes ka jo bhi target tha and uh, 10 minutes for a 15 marker ka jo bhi target tha i used to achieve this for every question for every question like i i used to look at so this translates to 3.5 minute per page i used to look at my watch twice for every page because i used to measure ki ha ha aadha likh liya to i maybe 1.5 2 minutes mein khatam karna chahiye isko so i used to do that level of time management during the examination for all 20 questions just because you know a question better or you don't know a question better doesn't mean i spend more time on it or less time on the other i used to have these these are very rigid for me my time management has been very rigid if you look any of my mock and open mera goal yahi hota tha ki 7 minute mein do page bharna hai 3 10 minute mein 3 page bharna hai and bharna hai matlab bharna hai pura last tak jitna space diya utna space use karna hi hai because that is your canvas to showcase your talent to your knowledge doesn't matter if you know that question or not 3 page diya hai to 3 page bharke hi aana hai the i will also tell you how to do that this consistency has to be maintained for all 20 questions so one question ki matlab kuch aisa bhi methods hote the some people used to say ki pehle you need to attend 15 markers then you come back to 10 markers because those carry more weightage and then even if you leave a question of 10 markers you won't lose much but usually i used to go to 1 2 20 20 seedha ek se shuru kiya fir 20 tak gaya over the course of 3 hours all 50 pages in the same order you know don't waste time scanning through the book or the question paper ki pehle ye kar lunga wo kar lunga don't waste those 2 3 minutes also because your ultimate goal is to complete all 20 questions agar pura 20 karna hi karna hai to why do you want to prioritize one question or the other if you want to do it you can do it but my sweet spot my sweet spot was all the 20 questions with the same consistency with the same time limit with the same amount of focus on each question so that is how i Uh, used to complete my paper and a exercise itna zyada kar liya itna mocks likh liya itna zyada exercise kar liya so even if you give me a 15 minutes time to write this 10 uh, 15 marker question maybe i'll write it in 10 minutes and wait out for 5 minutes because i didn't know how to take more time also because my speed was that ki 10 minute mein karna hai to karna hai this should be entrenched in your muscle memory ki agar dekh liya question likh liya 7 minute mein इतना हो, हो जाना चाहिए कि इवन इफ यू डोंट लुक एट योर वॉच यू शुड बी एबल टू टेल कि मैंने सात मिनट में क्वेश्चन कंप्लीट किया सो दैट शुड बी द लेवल ऑफ प्रैक्टिस यू शुड डू ऑन आंसर राइटिंग एंड अटेम्प्टिंग द पेपर एंड दिस कम्स व्हेन यू स्टार्ट गिविंग मॉक्स एंड यू डू दिस इन योर सेकेंड मंथ एंड देन फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेवन मंथ्स यू डू दिस विच मीन्स यू आर राइटिंग ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी मॉक्स बिफोर यूर प्रिलिम्स इट एंड वंस यू डू दैट यू हैव बेसिक्स ऑफ दिस and again you can do your mains run later which is also mostly mine is dependent on mocks which i'll tell you and uh, 
अदर पॉइंट ऑफ आंसर राइटिंग इज स्कीमेटिक्स कि इसको करना क्या है लाइक डायग्राम्स डू दैव टू बी इनकॉर्पोरेटेड और नो आई एम नॉट कम्फर्टेबल विद इट आई एम नॉट क्रिएटिव और समथिंग इट्स ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हैव स्कीमेटिक्स इन योर आंसर यू कैन इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू हैव स्कीमेटिक्स इन योर आंसर यू डोंट इट्स ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हैव डायग्राम्स इट्स ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल समटाइम्स डायग्राम्स बिकम इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइक जोग्राफी डायग्राम्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट से साइक्लोनोजेनेसिस और मॉनसून्स और वॉट एवर डायग्राम्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट लुक गुड इट लुक्स गुड ऑन योर पेपर ऑल्सो एंड मैप्स आर ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑन जोग्रफी सो यू नीड टू यू नो प्रैक्टिस इवन अ बेसिक इंडिया मैप इन सम फाइव और टेन सेकेंड्स यू प्रैक्टिस इट फॉर टेन फिफ्टीन टाइम्स एंड यू यू बी एबल टू ड्रॉ अ वेरी डिसेंट इंडिया मैप इन फाइव सेकेंड्स सो यू प्रैक्टिस दिस एंड एज फार एज डायग्राम्स दैट एंड स्कीमेटिक्स If it comes through your flow, if if in your flow you are able to incorporate schematics in your answer, it's good. If not, even it's good. You are only going to be judged on your content in mains. So if you are able to present your answer in a good way, don't try hard for those schematics. If you are not able to put those schematics in your paper, it's okay. You don't have to, you know, try too hard and uh, in that course, you know, slow down your answers or something. So if it's there, it's there. It's not, it's not. Usually, I used to have a set of schematics in my mind. Usually, say. कि नोलन का सेवल प्रिंसिपल्स हो गया एथिक्स में सो आई यूज टू हैव अ स्कीमेटिक इन माइंड सो वेन एवर दैट कम्स इन टू माई माइंड आई यूज टू हैव दिस स्कीमेटिक रिटर्न इन माई नोट्स विच यू यूज टू रिप्रोड्यूस इन माई एग्जामिनेशन या तो सेंडाई फ्रेमवर्क हो गया आई यूज टू हैव अ पेंटेगन या फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन हो गया ट्राइंगल हो गया अवेलेबिलिटी अफोर्डेबिलिटी एंड एक्सेसिबिलिटी सो दीज थिंग्स जो बेसिक थिंग्स है आई यूज टू हैव इट इन माई माइंड कुछ नया तो प्रोड्यूस नहीं करता था मैं एग्जाम में इट वॉज ऑल वॉट इज देयर इन माई नोट्स or whatever comes as a flow in the examination itself but i did not fret about it i did not spend any extra time ki matlab mere ko uh, answers mein schematics hona hi chahiye i didn't spend any extra time agar hai agar acha dikh raha hai jaise spe send diagram ho gaya financial inclusion ho gaya and if you have that in on your fingertips you can just put it on your paper agar nahi hai to nahi hai you can just write in points which looks very very good and if you don't have schematics you can just follow this point you write your introduction we you have your side heading point number 1 Next, if you have, want to add set points, one point one, one point two, point number two, point number three. This format is very fine. And conclusion, this point, this format is also good if you want to follow it. And this used to be my standard format. All numberings, no letters or arrow marks or anything. All numberings. And this is the standard format. If I had a schematic, I used to have a schematic. And you need to remember, schematic is a replacement of your answer. So you don't draw a schematic and write the same in your answer. so the thing is schematic should replace your content so it replaces two or three points save some time or space where you can add two more points of your choice so that you can efficiently present your paper but don't just you know write the same thing here and put it in a schematic that just it doesn't add any value it doesn't look good and you know the examiner may feel uh bored how to do it but again again the question comes ki mock to likh liya maine अब शुड आई वेट फॉर अंटिल द कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट इवेल्यूएट इट एंड गिव इट टू मी शुड आई वेट की कमेंट्स क्या आ रहा है उसमें एंड देन इनकॉर्पोरेट एंड डू माई एनालिस नो द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट योर यू राइट योर मॉक यू टेक योर सोल्यूशंस यू गो बैक टू योर होम और रूम वॉट एवर एंड देन एनालाइज लुक एट योर आंसर यू नो यू यू नो वॉट यू हैव रिटर्न यू नो देयर स्ट्रक्चर कंपेर इट यू नो वॉट यू कैन एड यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट यू कैन एड यू यू कैन से कि uh maybe these two points i can add or this structure might have been better or i did not address address the demand just make a note in your solution sheet itself and then uh file it away somewhere that's the thing you need to do you don't have to wait for the comments of the coaching institute which comes after a week or so and until then the questions won't be fresh in your mind you won't remember what you were thinking at that point of time or how you felt during the examination and this exercise becomes you know more or less uh not worth it if you're doing it after a later time again you do that do you do it do it by yourself so you can have this you know doubt ki i may not be you know that competent to judge my papers but yes you are and it might be a very unpopular opinion but i strongly believe ki you don't need mentor to clear this examination especially in this era of internet youtube and resources so you don't have to uh do anything on that you can do it by yourself you just have to confidently look on it have confidence in yourself have faith in yourself have you know 
just be like you have written these papers and every aspirant is on your level itself and by doing these exercises you are ahead of many many aspirants so you can do this by yourself you don't have to go running to others you don't have to depend on anyone and once you start depending on your mentors or any other coaching institutes or any other things you'll start depending on them for everything and anything and once you start depending once you know you lose that support maybe one day your mentor is not available he has gone on leave or something and then you shouldn't be in a dilemma ki abhi main karu kya abhi mera mentor nahi hai abhi kya dhoondu you shouldn't be in the dilemma you should depend only on yourself because this is the only dependable source that will be with you in entirety of your preparation your room and your room mate may not be with you your mentors may not be with you you can do it by yourself just a go simple google search and common sense is enough to evaluate yourself so that and another part of answer writing is yeah i told you i would discuss how to write a questions which uh, you do not know so this is also important because out of four papers 20 questions is out, out of 80 questions you'll have at least two or three questions which you do not know so that doesn't mean you just leave the page blank and come no obviously as i said your goal is to fill all the 50 pages then how do you do that you know this also comes by practice when you start giving mocks in your early stage there will be many questions which you don't know so you need to start intelligently guessing those main answers because you need to anyways give the two page content so try to give a such a vague answer don't make factual mistakes and write an answer such that the examiner examiner should have an impression that you may not be exactly knowing this uh, he shouldn't have the impression ki you don't know this he should have the impression ki he remembers this slightly but may not uh, but has not been able to present it in a very good way that is the impression you have to give so you need to use your common sense and have those intelligent guessing for example if there is an example see this question see this uh, paper i got uh, i think one week before my 21 wala mains so this is gs3 paper see, see the question agri stack can uh, serve as foundation to build agri focus solutions thus enabling creation of better ecosystem in agriculture in india also discuss the concerns so the question is about, about agri stack and how up it creates a better ecosystem for agriculture and the concerns associated with it and the problem with is i didn't know what agri stack was thus that is the first time i read a word called agri stack during my examination but still i filled two pages on this answer i'll show you how first make intelligent guesses what agri stack is it's a now i'll now i know what agri stack is it is a set of digital solutions where the data is aggregated and it gives a farmer based solutions but still i tried to put a very generic definition of agri stack itself the word i didn't know but still i guessed in the examination this is the first question of the examination so agri stack is the aggregation of agriculture related research innovations that look to build solution for agricultural problems the thing is i reproduce the question itself and it formed your introduction and see the comment good start <laughs> so the thing is i didn't know that but i made a intelligent guess and it's vague and it's not wrong i did not use the word digital because i didn't know what agri stack was but you know in a kind you are giving the examiner of you ki you know this question and that you start start with confidence that is the definition you're starting with definition which is very confident and, uh, next better agri forest agri focus solutions which i found it in the question itself and kya hota agri ka solutions see these points bring together expertise of various research stations kyunki ecosystem tha to bring it together then multidisciplinary then pooling together of resources lab to farm chain very vague points but ye socho kai pe bhi like whatever solution these are the problems which you find in every farming atmosphere not just india kai pe bhi farming ka yahi problems hota hai ki innovation sahi se nahi hota multidisciplinary research nahi hota lab to farm ka change nahi hota and if you bring a solution wahi solutions hota hai like bringing a lab to farm what 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 your problem is usi ka solution to nikalta hai uska agri stack is an innovation theek hai lab to farm chain build kar diya pooling together of resources kya quick adoption of agri based solutions so all the problems which you know of the farming uska solutions likh lo udhar that is what forms your answer and then concerns any scheme or anything in india yahi to hota hai concerns ki inequalities hai exploitation ho sakta hai commodification of agriculture vague points ho gaya agri stack is a welcome step to aggregate agricultural research and entrepreneurs in india 
दैट विल मतलब कुछ भी है बट सी द क्वेश्चन आई डेंट नो आई डिड नॉट लीव इट इतना प्रैक्टिस में कर लिया कि मेरे को पता था कि आई कैन राइट टू पेजेस एंड आई वॉज इतना कॉन्फिडेंट कि मेरे को पता था कि सारे इंडिया में कोई कुछ भी प्रॉब्लम का यही प्रॉब्लम होता है एंड यही सोल्यूशन होता है एंड दैट इज वॉट यू नीड टू डू एंड ये टेम्पलेट क्रिएट हो जाना चाहिए फॉर एग्जाम्पल एग्रीकल्चर का ये टेम्पलेट था मेरा फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर इज कम्स अ स्कीम एंड स्कीम का कंसर्स पूछा एंड यू डोंट नो द स्कीम हर स्कीम का यही कंसर्न होता है कि लैक ऑफ अवेयरनेस होता है या तो लैक ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन या तो लैक ऑफ फंडिंग तीन पॉइंट इधर ही हो गया एंड दीज आर द जेनेरिक कंसर्स फॉर एवरी स्कीम इन इंडिया so these are the things you have to incorporate in your answer and even the question which you do not know usko bhi itna hi confidence se karna chahiye doesn't matter if it's the first question or the last question because this is how this is answer writing because you did not lose four and half or five marks you get here and you also gave the impression to the examiner ki you are aware of a difficult question kyunki agristag is a difficult question not everyone would answer this almost half of the papers you they would see you would leave that question empty मतलब एट दैट टाइम आई डोंट नो मतलब अभी यू माइट यू पीपल माइट बी नोइंग व्हाट एग्री स्टैक इज बट आई डिट नो एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दिस वाज बिफोर 21 मेंस वन वीक बिफोर 21 मेंस एंड दिस पेपर आई गॉट सम वन नॉट एट और समथिंग आई एम टेलिंग यू सो दिस इज हाउ यू यू नो यू फेक इट इवन इन योर एग्जामिनेशन पेपर बाय गिविंग जेनेरिक नॉलेज डजंट मीन यू गिव फालतू का इंफॉर्मेशन और यू राइट सम स्टैटिस्टिक्स और समथिंग ना इसमें डेटा नहीं है बिकॉज आई न्यू कि जो जो कांसेप्ट मेरे को नहीं पता है उसमें डेटा मैं नहीं दे पाऊंगा बिकॉज दैट वुड you know that to saf saf it would tell the examiner ki i don't know what the concept is so i just want to give that picture ki i know what agri stack is but may not be able to reproduce it perfectly but still i know what the concept is and i know the core concerns of the concept so yahi dena this is how you write your answers to the questions which you don't know but kabhi kabhi like there are some bouncers where there is a macbride commission question like some 5 6 years ago i think it's about some committee on cultural diversity kuch to hai But those questions are something which you cannot do anything. वो तो blank छोड़ के ही आना है या तो कुछ वेग लिख के आ जाओ because ninety nine नहीं hundred percent of the aspirants haven't heard of McBride Commission till they have seen that question in the examination. You don't just मतलब you don't just get panicked by looking at that question. You know कि किसी को नहीं पता है मेरे को भी नहीं पता है and छोड़ के आ जाओ या तो कुछ लिख के आ जाओ generic. So you know don't also overdo it. But you know you should play to your strengths and do these intelligent guesses. because yahi answer writing is the canvas to showcase your talent and this is what gets in and <coughs> yes uske mm. baad ho gaya we have done from from hamara plan ke hisab se june se first week of march tak we did our mains preparation we completed our main syllabus Mock test bill likh liya. We we wrote around twenty or thirty mocks. We are now ready for mains. Abhi three months aur diya to mains mein will get very good marks. And usme optional bhi ho gaya. Three months we devoted to optional in this entire thing. Three full months we devoted to optional. To optional bhi ho gaya hamara. Syllabus ho gaya. Ab kya bacha hai? To write mains you need to clear prelims. So from first week of March to date of prelims. you do this prelims run so what i believe is if you have done this exercise diligently with concentration with dedication and in entirety matlab comprehensively agar ye kar diya to 90 days is enough to clear prelims provided you did this in a very good manner and this is the risky game yahi dekh lo unless you have done this unless you are sure ki ye main kar raha hu don't give more than 90 days to prelims if you are sure ki matlab if you are not sure ki mera sahi se nahi hua polity mein abhi bhi doubt hai geography mein abhi conceptual clarity nahi hai abhi history bhi mere ko yaad nahi hai then you would need more than 90 but if you have done this your mock test scores are good and if you are confident on yourself the 90 days is enough अभी 90 डेज में भी करना क्या है 90 डेज व्हाट आई डेड इज यू नो डिवाइडेड इनटू फाइव मेजर सब्जेक्ट्स जो भी प्रीलिम्स का पांच लाइन का सिलेबस है यू डिवाइडेड इनटू फाइव ज्योग्राफी हिस्ट्री इकोनॉमिक्स पॉलिटी एंड एनवायरनमेंट सो 90 डेज डिवाइडेड बाय फाइव गिव्स 18 डेज टू ईच सब्जेक्ट now i divided into three phases 
so for every subject this comes in three phases so this 18 days it would be divided in this manner in phase 1 i would give 9 6 and 3 so in phase 1 i would give 9 days to each subject which take care, which takes care of the first 45 days then 6 days to each subject for the next 30 days then 3 days to the next 5 and again 15 so 45 plus uh, 30 uh, 45 plus 30 plus 15 so 90 so in three phases in phase 1 geography i give 9 days then history economics polity environment and then i go back to the cycle again then i go back to the cycle again but you might say this is half of your preparation the other half are mocks so i would say ki daily ek mock dena hi hai in these 90 days daily morning subah utho 7 baje after newspaper 8 o'clock you can start your mock 8 to 10 mock kar liya after that breakfast say 10 30 to 12 30 or 1 you can revise on that mock so even this much cheat days or baki days nikal do holidays or where you feel fatigue or something say at least 50 mocks to de sakte hain out of these 90 days sundays baki hata do you can give 50 to 60 mocks so every day in your day first half in my day first half is devoted to mock and its revision so i write a mock i write these 100 questions in 2 hours and then revise the answers i look at the answers check the key and then uh, look at what concepts are missing from my preparation and then revise on and second half i used to do this this in the sense this plus current affairs also which is implied current affairs are implied in this all this preparation so i used to do this in the second half so you should see mocks are a part of your preparation they are not just a test of your preparation and mocks may matlab itne dene ka fayda hai kya is also a question i had a matlab beat mains beat prelims mocks are my major sources of my preparation 50 mock diya maine and i cleared both the times second mera interview tha so i was only able to give 40 mocks and i cleared it the second time and I feel ki mains ka preparation achcha hai, 90 days devote kar rahe ho, revision achcha se kar rahe ho and 50 mocks de rahe ho, you'll clear the cutoff comfortably by 4 or 5 marks. Jitna chahiye, utna. Utna hi chahiye. If the cutoff is 90, you need to get 95, utna to aa jayega if you do this. But giving mocks is not just giving mocks. Uska analyze kar rahe ho, doesn't mean ki matlab answer dek liya, haa nahi, iska ye nahi hai, b, ye nahi hai. You need to, you know, analyze how you're attempting the paper. Because... Prelims is a game in itself. It's like a say, I always used to say that mains are a test match, jaisa hai, lamba kichta hai, you need to be you know, patient, perseverant, dedicated. Prelims is like a T20 match. It's a calculated guesses, lena padega. It's a risk, lena padega. you need to, you know, it's not just you're hitting the bad balls out. It's a try karna padega score karna ke liye. So you need to have your strategy. Ki kitna questions attempt karu, kon sa, sa subjects attempt karu, kon sa isme attempt karu, what is my pattern. So these all. For example, the moment I start the mock, I used to categorize my questions into four categories. So, see the start kar liya, first question se, mark kar liya. These are the four uh, categories. This question means it's a this category is a sure shot category. Ye mere ko answer pata hi tha. This is I eliminated two options. Do mein abhi doubt hai. Is my I eliminated only one? This is purely on gut feeling or what we call fluke. So, this category ka questions, I don't know if you have any questions. I'm just looking at it the for the first time. Now, options eliminate ho pa hai. So, I need to take an intelligent guess. This is eliminate kiya. So, it's between three options. 33% chance is iska. Iska 50% chance. Hai. This, I only have 25% chance of getting it right. So, now. In my first attempt, I used to only attempt these category questions. So the moment I starting started my mock, I used to mark one is a kind of question, two is HT. Nay, third me kuch pata. It's a fluke. Fourth, fir se. Matlab, iska full form mat pucho mere se. Me bhool gaya tha. But still, it's a nomenclature bus. Kuch to tha iska. I think half tukka tha kuch. This I don't know why it was. Ye bhi nahi pata kyun aisa nomenclature hai. But I used to mark it. And at the end of the paper, I used to count ki ye ka questions kitna hai mere paas. And then, see, you used to analyze your success rate also. 
अगर ये कैटेगरी क्वेश्चन एटलीस्ट एटी फाइव टू नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन वे ऑफ गेटिंग द आंसर राइट सो अनलेस इसका अगर सिक्सटी परसेंट सेवेंटी परसेंट आपका सक्सेस रेट है इसमें देन यू हैव अ कॉन्सेप्चुअल प्रॉब्लम एंड यू हैव टू रिवाइज मोर एंड अभी दिस वन दिस एनी वेज हैज फिफ्टी परसेंट चांस ऑफ सक्सेस रेट इसका तो एटलीस्ट सिक्सटी परसेंट होना चाहिए बिकॉज यू आर टेकिंग इंटेलिजेंट गैसेस एंड सेम इसका तो फोर्टी परसेंट इसका तो एटलीस्ट थर्टी फाइव परसेंट और थर्टी परसेंट बिकॉज यू नीट बी अबाउ दिस बिकॉज इफ यू हैव अ बेसिक कॉन्सेप्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू शुड बी अबाउ द प्रॉबिलिटी यू शुड नो कि मतलब इंटेलिजेंट गैस कर रहा है तो कुछ ऐसा क्वेश्चन भी राइट होना चाहिए एंड देन इट डजेंट स्टॉप विथ हियर आई यूज टू सी कि ये कितना क्वेश्चन आया मेरे पास सो द नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन अटेम्प्टेड इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो हाउ मेनी क्वेश्चन शुड आई अटेम्प्ट तो देर इज अ ग्रे एरिया ऑन हाउ मेनी क्वेश्चन शुड आई अटेम्प्ट कि मतलब टफ पेपर है तो कम अटेम्प्ट करना है इजी पेपर है तो ज्यादा अटेम्प्ट करना है क्योंकि कट ऑफ बढ़ेगा सो हाउ डू आई नो इट इज इट अ टफ पेपर और एन ईजी पेपर सो आई टू पेग इट टू दिस सो आई हैव अ दिस की अगर ये कैटेगरी क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द फर्स्ट राउंड ऑफ द पेपर अगर मेरे पास पचास आया देन इट इज अ मॉडरेट पेपर एंड मेरे को आई पैक्ड इट टू एटी फाइव एटी फाइव अटेम्प्ट करना है अगर ये पचास आया तो दैट्स वॉट हैपन्ड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन आई गॉट फोर्टी नाइन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन फिल्म आई गॉट फोर्टी वन फोर्टी नाइन ऑफ दिस राइट फोर्टी वन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इन माई फर्स्ट राउंड एंड आई अटेम्प्टेड एटी फाइव बट इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू आई गॉट ओनली फोर्टी फोर्टी टू आई थिंक सो आई फिगर आउट द पेपर इज ऑन द टफर साइड सो आई ब्रॉड दिस डाउन टू सेवेंटी नाइन क्योंकि माई होल पॉइंट इज नॉट स्कोरिंग मार्क्स एंड फिल्म माई होल पॉइंट इज मैक्माइजिंग माई स्कोर ऑन दैट डे वो भी दो घंटा का जो पेपर है उसमें मेरा स्कोर को मैक्माइज करना है दैट इज माई ओनली गोल ऑप्टिमाइज माई स्कोर इन द मोस्ट एफिशियंट वे पॉसिबल सो आई पेक्ट टू दिस अभी यू कैन आस्क मी एटी फाइव एंड सेवेंटी नाइन पे कैसे आ रहे हो कि हाउ डू यू नो कि एटी फाइव इज योर स्वीट स्पॉट उसका भी बता दूंगा मैं एक्सरसाइज सो एवरी थिंग इज एनालिटिकल so i'll show you this so this is the phase wise plan uh, which i have told you three phases mein kiya hai again planning ka you would see micro planning again isme bhi aaya hai you know i plan this over phases ki ha isme 12th se start kiya 15th tak quality padhna hai and idhar bhi when i say 9 days ah uh, it doesn't have to be rigid because you know geography pe नाइन डेज स्पेंड करना इज अ बिट मोर यू नो वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम बिकॉज मे बी हिस्ट्री वुड नीड लेवन डेज तो यू कैन पिक आउट टू डेज फ्रॉम जोग्राफी एंड कोटेड इन हिस्ट्री और पिक वन डे फ्रॉम पॉलिटी एंड कोटेड इन एनवायरमेंट और समथिंग बिकॉज द प्लेस विच नीड मोर रिविजन शुड भी देर सो ये वॉटर टाइट नहीं है दिस नाइन सिक्स एंड थ्री यू कैन जस्ट एडजस्टेड बेस्ड ऑन योर कन्वीनियंस एंड स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ योर सब्जेक्ट्स सो यूजली दिस हैज बीन माइन I started with polity, went into economics, geography, history, and environment, and then next I started with geography. Doesn't mean I go into the same order. Now I realized that after phase one, geography easier. Then I started geography, completed geography and polity. Then I focused on these questions, these important topics in phase two. Next phase three, you can see I put history in the last and environment in the last because these are the subjects that require memorization. आपको याद होना चाहिए चीजें. That is why I am doing them close to the. examination two days before the examination which is 8 10 i was reading history so this is what phase wise planning was then i just as i said you again micro planning hai isme i broke it down again isme targets rakhta tha ki ha wednesday ko ye sab complete karna hai tuesday ko ye sab complete karna hai this is the level of micro targeting again it's involved in prelims so planning jo bhi part strategy se hum baat kar rahe the planning ka importance kya hai you see flew to flew through entirety of my preparation हर पार्ट पे प्लानिंग की जरूरत है नेक्स्ट दीज आर द नेम्स ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट विच आई टेकन विच आई डिडेक्टेड सो यू कैन सी आई यूज टू प्लॉट इट अगेंस्ट दू नो आई यूज टू प्लॉट दिस इज द डेट ऑफ द मॉक टेस्ट आई हैव गिवन दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट दिस इज द मार्क्स आई हैव अचीव दिस इज द नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन आई हैव अटेम्प्टेड दीज आर द करेक्ट वन दीज आर द रॉन्ग क्वेश्चन सो यू कैन सी आई हैव प्लॉटेड दिस आउट From August, October 10th, August, September, and October was the uh, was my prelims run. Because October 10th's exam was. This was in 21. So you can see 
even in august i used to get marks like 54.3 62.2 this is 76 this is 64 doesn't mean you get disheartened you know one month before this uh, see 7th september ko ye mark dekho 67.6 so one month before prelims also i scored and marks in the range of 60s but the thing is you need to do this exercise revise every day work upon it you know there are some tough papers there are some easy papers and you see the number of questions attempted are not constant this brought me 91 this 87 91 87 86 87 86 85 you know i plotted these the marks versus the uh, number of questions attempted and you know this is the next thing you see 14th 60.9 this is 85 you know 2 weeks before the examination i was getting in 80s 87 and then the cut off used to be higher 90s or 100s but it doesn't mean you get disheartened because i know for this paper i achieved my maximum marks which are 85 or 87 only because that was my level if it was tough it was tough so my point was i should get the maximum marks i i'm going to get in that one no silly mistakes no calculation errors or no omr errors or anything you need to be perfect on that day of the examination you need to be very efficient so i plotted this against the graph and you can see this graph this is the marks which i achieved and this this i plotted during my main prelims run and this is the number of questions attempted these allowances are previous papers so they give you a biased view but if you leave them so you can see this graph so i know where my peak hit 85 and 86 so that is how i arrived at the score called uh, arrived at the number mereko 85 ya 86 attempt karna hai that came after the analysis of 50 or 60 mock tests and a graph and a plot so your sweet spot might be different you might be you know comfortable with answering the 70 questions and getting the maximum marks so everyone has their different sweet, sweet spot some uh, kisi ka idhar hoga kisi ka idhar hoga kisi ka idhar hoga but your point is you need to attempt over all this and reach at a sweet spot you need to do that analysis ki kaha mera maximum aa raha hai kaha where i am touching the maximum score so that is how i reach ki first cat, first me 50 questions agar mera aa raha hai first round me then i'll go for 85 questions agar nahi hai to pura graph shift ho jayega udhar once your papers getting tough ye to idhar shift hoga and your peak will be at 79 which it happened in my second 2022 wala attempt prelims me i got 93 in this attempt in 21 i got 99.9 99.9 9 or 6 something so you can see the thing is consistently cut off se 5 se upar aana chahiye that is what your thing should be and that is what i did for my prelims abhi <coughs> iske baad prelims ke baad aayega main run which means post prelims to mains अभी तीन महीने के बाद तीन महीने प्रिलिम्स करने के बाद यू कम बैक टू मेन्स मोड एंड वो ट्रांसिशन इतना आसान नहीं है यू डोंट कम मतलब संडे प्रिलिम्स लीख लिया संडे शाम को कट ऑफ देख लिया एंड यूर थिंक यू गोइंग टू क्लियर एंड मंडे मॉर्निंग एथिक्स उठाना बहुत मुश्किल है दैट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो इधर टेक अ वन वीक ब्रेक दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई थिंक First August ke baad, this is the first time I have taken break in my preparation. I came home for three or four days, and uh, then I went back. So you need to take one week break proper after prelims, because you need to get your mind refreshed. Because you'll be done a lot of pressure. You have done a lot of uh, work during the last three months. Yeah, it's ha- it has been hectic, and now clear kar do. Just put off the cut cut off speculation away. One week after your prelims ends, you don't wait for cut offs or results. You start your mains preparation. एंड अगेन फिर से प्लानिंग फिलिम्स और मेन्स के बीच में यूल हैव यूजली थर्टीन और फोर्टीन वीक्स यूजली इट्स फोर्टीन वीक्स इट्स आर्ट्स एंड मिड सेप्टेम्बर दिस एंड इन मे यू हैव जून जुलाई अगस्ट एंड टू वीक्स ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर विच कम्स आउट टू फोर्टीन वीक्स सो फोर्टीन वीक्स में यू हैव टेकन अप बैक फॉर वन वीक सो थर्टीन वीक्स रह गए हमारे पास द सब्जेक्ट सर जी एस वन जी एस टू जी एस थ्री GS4 and optional. So I used to divide this. Har GS ko do hafte do. Eight weeks. And then four hafte optional ko do. 
and one week you can do this rehearsal wala exercise to the prelim to the finals so i used to do this again i used to plan this i think i have that slide also ha huh. this is the main stunt so i do it in two phases so first week sethik spread liya second gs3 couple of anthropology weeks and then gs2 gs1 ek phase ho gaya idhar so this is one phase done and next phase phir se ethics anthropology gs3 2 1 and ye rest of the topics this is this i'll tell you why why i have left this week free and this actually us us 21 mein you had only 12 weeks left for the examination so that is why optional ke liye ek week kam aaya idhar so the thing is i had to sacrifice one thing or the other and i chose to sacrifice optional because I was weak in optional. मेरे को पता था एक हफ्ते और भी पढ़ के भी उससे ज़्यादा मार्क्स नहीं आने वाला है। I wanted to have only average marks. I got 255 in anthropology that year. Uh, so I left anthropology ऐसे ही and I concentrated on GS. So this is my main run. And now this again इसको फिर से break करना है। What's so special in my main run and the others main main run is this was you know as I said answer writing बहुत important है। my mains would be monday to thursday five days prepare for that gs jo bhi hai gs1 ka week hai to gs1 pad lo 5 din mein friday 9 to 12 you given essay and friday afternoon you revise on that essay and uh, वर्क आउट योर एसए कॉन्सेप्ट एसए के लिए क्या करना है थोड़ी देर पे के बाद बात करेंगे सो यू रिवाइज दैट एसए एंड प्रिपेयर फॉर योर एसए सैटरडे संडे टू मॉक्स ईच नाइन टू ट्वेल्व टू टू फाइव नाइन टू ट्वेल्व टू टू फाइव दैट मीन्स वन वीक यू आर गिविंग वन एस ए प्लस फोर मॉक्स इन द प्रॉपर यूपीएससी फॉर्मेट थ्री आर वाला and this is what you have to do in the final also in the finals you'll have your essay on friday saturday sunday you'll have gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 so you have to give four 3 hour tests and an essay in one weekend in the final and that is why during mains run you are preparing for that weekend so you do this exercise for 13 weeks and in the 14th week it would feel no special the moment you start opening your book you will start writing your answers the flow aise aa jayega like it as i said it will be entrenched in your muscle memory ki aapko pata hai ki 9 baje paper khulne wala hai you put your pen and it goes you will not feel any pressure you will not feel any strain you will not feel any mental block or anything because you have done that for 13 weeks this is a very hard practice it's like being in a gym you are lifting a 5 kg weight for 13 weeks and in the 14th week you can easily lift a 5 kg or a 7.5 kg So you, you can see how rigorous this practice was. When I say mains has this perseverance or patience, you know this is where it reflects. Giving the mocks, sitting for twelve hours a week, six hours a day is very difficult. You will be tired the moment you come back to to your room. You will not have कुछ भी मतलब मन नहीं होता कुछ भी करने का. The thing is you need to come back, but still, उस दिन जो दो exams लिखे उसका revision करना है वापस आके. छः बजे आप वापस आओगे पांच बजे लिख के. and then 6 o'clock you start doing that analysis of the morning or do mock and do, those will take 2 to 2 hours each and it itself will go to 11 11:30 or 12 and kal subah fir se uth ke fir se do dena hai and fir se do ka analysis karna hai and trust me this works i have done this for 13 weeks diligently both the times and my G, gs scores bearing gs3 were very exceptional in both the times and every time i completed all the uh, whole whole 80 questions of the paper in 3 hours even this time i used to have one or two minutes left after each paper after giving those 20 questions because i have done this so that is the mains run you know again it planning involves see this i used to plan this week i am reading gs3 this is the essay ka mock test number this is the number uh, number of the mock test which i am going to give in that week i used to plan this ahead of the uh, mains run itself before starting the mains run itself i used to plan these things in yellow and i used to if i have given this mock test i have to put it in green so this i planned before starting my mains preparation like after just after prelims 
after the one week break i used to do this plan and give exams and when you when you do this planning automatically the motivation of giving exams comes you don't have to push yourself through you don't have to say ki ab kaun sa exam dhoond lu matlab kya dhoon kya dhoond dhoondna nahi padega you will have it all planned bas jao aapko pata hai ki exam number 1494 dena hai seedha jao examination center mein 1494 you give it and come back so that is what you do so every weekend was planned in the same way and this i used to plan wo bhi micro planning jo bhi hum baat kiya that is incorporated here again in mains planning all in excel sheet to ye sare documented hai you you document it you do it in your book if you want you do it in a laptop if you want but do this planning kyunki idhar har you can write it ki mere ko ye padhna hai ye padhna hai ye padhna hai ye padhna hai and ye padhna hai and that is what you have to do iske baad yaar essay we are going to discuss so essay See, usually earlier it used to be the case कि एक abstract topic आएगा and एक GS वाला topic आएगा this anyways you'll have be you'll be prepared and abstract कुछ भी लिख लो हो जाता था but in ट्वेंटी when I first gave my mains both the topics were both the sections were from abstract topics and last year also that was the case so I think that's going to be the case for the next whatever years to come so अभी again ऐसे करना कैसा है ऐसे क्या लिखना है usually abstract topic dekhe you know a kind of mind block as you get zoned out you'll have a mind block ki karna kya hai is pe so again you know jaise hum mains ka answer writing ko mechanical kar diya isko bhi mechanical kar do aise ka brainstorming bhi you know have some techniques ki where you can brainstorm matlab ek se dekhte hi you can brainstorm first picking the topic picking the topic pick the topic which you are most comfortable with iska koi aur criteria nahi hai jis topic pe aapko lagta hai ki 12 page likhunga wahi topic lena hai that is the topic you pick most comfortable topic kuch bhi ho sakta hai doesn't matter if it's the most picked topic or the least picked topic or whatever it is don't think about all those things in the examination in the examination you only pick that topic which you feel you are most comfortable with and which you feel you have 12 pages of content to write so abhi content kaha se aayega you pick the topic फॉर एग्जाम्पल लास्ट ईयर का टॉपिक क्या होता है शिप्स आर सेफ इन हार्बर कुछ तो होता है ऐसे बट दैट्स नॉट शिप्स आर मेंट फॉर सो हो गया टॉपिक अभी हाउ डू यू ब्रेन स्ट्रॉम इट सो आई यूज टू यूज द मेथड कॉल क्वेश्चन मेथड सो इसमें सीधा यू लुक एट द टॉपिक and you list down all the questions that come into your mind for example can you can you just tell me the questions which come into your mind when you look at the topic just they say some random what can be okay what can be ships next hmm no no i want questions what why how whatever the question it is like what is comfort zone wo bhi ho gaya what is comfort zone ho gaya next whatever questions that come to your mind why are ships in harbor why are ships in harbor safe what is safe what are ships meant for, what are ships meant for? Types, of types of ships next are there any cases where they are safe in the harbor are there any cases where they are meant to be in harbor ho gaya aise ka body yahi hai pehle likho ships kya hai next why are they safe in the harbor then bolo ki comfort zone mein rehna nahi hai then what what are ships meant for batao ki ships are meant to do this and that is why you have to come out of the harbor it is your comfort zone but there might be some cases where you have to be in the harbor when there is a cyclone or some other kind of rough seas you have to be in the harbor and then contra examples bhi do iska examples do iska contra examples do ho gaya aapka essay ka body and then write the conclusion is questions ko thoda order kar do you will get the essay ka body zyada socha nahi hai 15 minutes mein you can do this exercise and examples kaise dhoondna hai now i used to follow this approach called pestel which you might know so basically these are the different dimensions political economic social science technological legal environmental so find one example from every one of these dimensions and give it in any one of the cases so har question ka iska answer likhoge and usi dimension mein koi ek example utha ke idhar doge and again same koi question utha lo now pick out environment and put it here or tribes whatever it is now you put it in this example ho gaya abhi aise mein dimensions bhi aa gaye aise ka body bhi aa gaya and usually what is aise ka structure mera ye hota tha 
फर्स्ट आई टू स्टार्ट विद एन एनिक डॉट देन तीसरी स्टेटमेंट देन बॉडी विच इज द क्वेश्चन विच हैव जस्ट डिस्कस्ड एंड देन कंक्लूजन कंक्लूजन से पहले प्री कंक्लूजन so anecdote is my usual you know go to thing you can start with a quote also you can start with some other thing but i usually feel most comfortable with anecdote or a story because you know agar nahi nahi bhi aata hai waise to you can just uh, create a story of your own and just uh, give it in the thing but usually if it's a realistic example it's good so this is the question i have picked in my final also and anecdote i have given dhoni 2011 वर्ल्ड कप फाइनल वाला एग्जांपल एनिकडोट धोनी वाइट बी से सेफ इन हिज ड्रेसिंग रूम बट ही चोज टू कम आउट एंड फाइट ऑन द फाइनल एंड ही वन द मैच फॉर अस सो दैट वाज माय एनिकडोट आई स्टार्टेड दिस इन सच अ वे दैट आई रीअफर्म माय स्टेटमेंट एंड नाउ तीसरी स्टेटमेंट तीसरी स्टेटमेंट एक्सप्लेन्स कि हां दिस इज से से इज दिस 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 यू एक्सप्लेन योर बॉडी यू गिव अ ट्रेलर कि हां बॉडी में एंड कंक्लूजन में एंड प्री कंक्लूजन में ये होना चाहिए ये होगा मेरे ऐसे में दिस एक्सप्लेन दिस ऐसे पॉइंट्स ऑफ दिस एंड दिस लेटर दिस दिस आर एक्सप्लेन लेटर दिस इज एक्सप्लोर्ड एंड देन वी कंक्लूड विद अ लॉजिकल कंक्लूजन दैट इज अ तीसरी स्टेटमेंट यू आर शोइंग हिम व्हाट योर एसे डस देन योर बॉडी द क्वेश्चंस वाला व्हिच आई डिड इन द बॉडी वेदर और नॉट टू यूज साइड हेडिंग्स यूजुअली एसे इज अ यू नो इट्स इट हैज टू बी पैराग्राफिक एसे यूजुअली डजंट you know it's not good to have side headings in an essay but what i have seen is i get more marks when i use side headings in my mocks so i use them in the final also because that is what we have to do doesn't matter what essay is you do what you get more marks so so i used to have a pool of side headings i made a list of 10 15 side headings which i used to use in my essays whatever the essay it is you know basic side headings for example say ki cryptocurrency ka essay aa gaya so i had to introduce what cryptocurrency is because that is the first question which comes into your mind my heading would be abcs of cryptocurrency ho gaya and then i had to give cryptocurrency advantages be a disadvantages be a we don't know how to pandora's box double edged sword promise or peril charms and challenges there are number of side headings which you can use for example kisi ka to advantages sare explain kar diya you have to give another point also you know an opposite side of it say not everything is sunshine and rainbows and write a set of uh, contrast statements you know against to the topic of the essay so have the pool of 10 side headings see zyada nahi hona chahiye bas you know i used to have two types of each side heading jaise what batane ke ek to hai abcs dusra hai left right and center सो so, एक ऐसे में ये यूज कर दिया दूसरे ऐसे में ये यूज कर दो एक ऐसे में प्रॉमिस एंड पेरिल यूज किया एक ऐसे में डबल एट्स वर्ड यूज कर दो दोनों ऐसे में सो दैट यू आर नॉट रिपीटिंग योर हेडिंग्स एंड ऑल यू माइट स्टे योर यूनिक एंड योर थॉट ऑन द फीट एंड ऑल अगर इफ यू इफ यू आर क्रिएटिव एंड से कि ऐसे को लिंक करते हुए आई कैन क्रिएट यू नो थीमेटिक साइड हेडिंग्स यू कैन डू इट यू कैन यूज हैरी पोटर फॉर योर साइड हेडिंग्स और वॉट एवर but still you have to work up on it and you have to be creative for that if you think you can create you can do that if you think you are not well and good ye sare standard side readings follow kar do pretty straight forward you know the road ahead the light at the end of the tunnel see jo bhi cliched statements hai ye utha lo 10 15 you'll have enough side readings to fill two or three essays kuch zyada nahi karne ka isme yahi essay mein and i can't say ki essay ka zyada bhi hai the pre conclusion is that thing it's conclusion you see you don't summarize in any of these things conclusion is the last half of a paragraph where you give powerful statements where you reserve your best for the last where you end on a very high note it's very good if you can connect it to the anecdote or use a quote in the conclusion it's very good but doesn't have to be you have to do that or not it's good if you do that uh, and pre conclusion is where you don't summarize but you put across your point pre conclusion is where you say ki ha ships shouldn't be in your in the harbor but as we have seen above we have seen here we have seen here we have seen here so you have seen that ships are meant to do this not that and that's why they have they shouldn't be in harbor because ships are meant to be sailing on the seas that is their whole point 
ये प्री कंक्लूजन में आएगा एंड कंक्लूजन में यू रीटरेट दिस पॉइंट विद समरफुल स्टेटमेंट कुछ कोर्ट सोच रहे हो या कनेक्टेड टू द एनिकडोट इट सेल्फ कि हाँ लाइक एनिकडोट में ऐसा ऐसा हुआ दैट इज वाई दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट ऐसा एंड इट लुक्स गुड इफ यू यू नो हैव एन एस एज अ फुल सर्किल सो एब्सट्रैक्ट के लिए यूजली दिस वर्क फॉर मी बट एंड एंड टाइम मैनेजमेंट अगर बताना है तो इसमें फिफ्टीन मिनट फॉर ब्रेन स्टॉमिंग यू हैव टू राइट ट्वेल्व पेजेस सिक्स मिनट्स ऑफ ईच which comes to 72 minutes plus this 87 minutes you will be left with 3 minutes for essay which you can take it as a buffer time so that is the time management and either they go see in general studies you got 3.5 minute per page here you are getting 6 minutes that means you have to spend more time on this your writing needs to be slow you need you need to think and write it's not like a gs answer where you just scribble think for 30 minutes and scribble for 30 minutes aisa nahi hai you need to give it time thoda usko you need to build a beautiful essay it's like you're sculpting something you need to give it time you need to give it you need to be patient you need to think you can just stop if you are out of ideas and take a break and think for 2 minutes and then still write because you'll be left with a lot of time to write an essay but use all the 90 minutes or the 3 hours given for the essay so ye mains ka ho gaya and then we'll move to the next stage which is interview so interview ka i don't have a lot of pointers to say and also i have used a lot of time of yours also so interview ka i used to see usually for interview there are two points to prepare one is draft the other is current affairs so uh draft mein the thing is you pick out your draft you'll have a lot of fields on your draft her field ka you can have five or six questions which you can write yourself you can look at your draft कुछ क्वेश्चंस दिमाग में आ जाएंगे कि वाई दिस वाई दैट वाई दैट और यू कैन सी इन एनी ऑफ द ट्रांसक्रिप्ट्स की लास्ट टाइम ये क्वेश्चन पूछा गया फॉर एग्जांपल इफ लाइक आई एम फ्रॉम आई गोवर्टी आई कैन सी लास्ट ईयर आई टी गोवर्टी एस्परेंट्स कोई भी इंटरव्यू में गया तो वॉट क्वेश्चन दे हैव आस्ट एंड आई पिक दोज क्वेश्चन एंड दूसरा करंट अफेयर्स जो आई टेक रनिंग टॉपिक्स इसका न्यूज पेपर इज वन सोर्स ऑफ करंट अफेयर्स वेर यू पिक इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स एंड दूसरा इज ट्रांसक्रिप्ट्स unless your interview is in you're unlucky enough to be in the first week of the interviews you'll get a lot of information from the transcripts itself you'll understand what the focus areas are which board ask what type of questions and all you can just list down those topics and have pointers for that and you can also pick uh, new, uh, from the newspaper itself for example the ukraine crisis going on you can just uh, ukraine crisis is one uh, pointer in your current affairs topic and for example see this current affairs topics you can see this is for this year g20 and sai 20 so i had five pointers for that next sai 20 five pointers brics five pointers these i have either seen in the transcripts or i have seen from the newspapers for example sai 20 i picked supreme audit institution 20 because i am serving in the sai india no uh, indian audit and account service so that is why i put more focus on that and daf ka daf ka questionnaire is this so name abhi mere paas फर्स्ट फील्ड है मेरा नाम है नाम का क्वेश्चन मीनिंग क्या है व्हाई दिस व्हाई नॉट दैट व्हाई टू नेम्स हु आर द प्रोमिनेंट दिस ऑन डेट ऑफ बर्थ व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दैट डेट हु ऑल आर बोर्न ऑन दैट डेट विवेकानंद द जेफ बेसोस व्हाई इज इट नेशनल यूथ डे प्लेस ऑफ बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ बर्थ का क्या व्हाई इज इट इंपॉर्टेंट मतलब नाम कहां से आया इंपॉर्टेंस क्या है उसका इंपोर्ट्स एक्सपर्ट्स क्या होता है व्हाट इज दिस एंड ऑल सो दिस इज हाउ यू फॉर्म फॉर्म योर क्वेश्चंस ऑन फ्रॉम योर डेफ एंड देन यू फॉर्म आंसर्स टू दिस एंड यू स्टार्ट रिसर्चिंग ऑन ईच ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन दिस में ये मैं कहाँ से नहीं उठाया ये मैं खुद से मतलब देख के आई फील्ड की लाइक इफ आई एम वेरिंग द शूज ऑफ द इंटरव्यूअर ऑफ द बोर्ड मैं बैठ के क्या क्वेश्चन पूछूंगा यही तो होता है क्वेश्चन इस फील्ड में इस फील्ड में भी यही क्वेश्चन होता है दिस यू कैन फॉर्म बाई योर सेल्फ एंड देन स्टार्ट रिसर्चिंग ऑन दैट एंड दैट वुड गिव यू अ लॉट ऑफ इंसाइट ऑन बोथ योर सेल्फ एंड ऑन योर डैफ एंड देर इज अ वेबसाइट कॉल सिक्सटीन पर्सनैलिटीज आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ आई रिमेंबर दिस राइट Oh, I think it's 16 personalities itself. You can just go take a test there. It's a personality test, and it gives you a very clear, uh, you know, a web page where it lists lists down your strengths, your weaknesses, things and all. Now the thing with this website is you know your strengths and weaknesses, but strengths ko ye achche se, uh, मतलब the wording is very good, and weaknesses ko bhi ऐसा wording करता है कि they are your strengths. So that is more important. इधर से मतलब वो ah semantics का जो game है. वो इधर से 
यू कैन लर्न सिक्सटीन पर्सनैलिटीज में इंटरव्यू के लिए इससे ज़्यादा करने के लिए कुछ नहीं है एंड कमिंग टू मॉक्स आई थिंक इफ यू हैव टाइम फोर टू फाइव मॉक्स आर गुड इनफ चार पाँच मॉक दो डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर टाइम और योर इंटरव्यू डेट और समथिंग एंड टेक दिस विद अ पिंच ऑफ साल्ट बिकॉज यू नो देर नथिंग लाइक द ओरिजिनल इंटरव्यू फाइनल इंटरव्यू इज अ डिफरेंट बॉल गेम ऑल टूगेदर वॉट द बोर्ड एक्सपेक्ट्स हाउ दे डू इट आई डोंट नो इट्स वेरी यू नो आई शुड से कि आई गॉट वन एटी फोर बोथ द ईयर्स लास्ट ईयर एंड दिस ईयर एक्जैक्ट सेम स्कोर सो आई डोंट नो हाउ दे अराइव डिट दिस वेदर दे हैव अ मैकेनिज्म फॉर इट और समथिंग बट स्टिल फोर टू फाइव मॉक्स इज गुड यू नो यू गेट डेकोरम वाले चीज़ें पर ध्यान देना कि ऐसा बैठना है ऐसा ड्रेसअप करना है टाई ऐसा पहनना है एंड स्टफ कुछ डार्क कलर्स पहनना है शूज़ या पहनना है एंड बाकी वो लोग जो बोलेंगे कि मतलब आई कॉन्टैक्ट वगैरह लाइक वॉट कम्स नेचुरल टू यू कम्स नेचुरल टू यू इफ दे आर टेलिंग यू यू स्पीक टू फास्ट एंड इफ इट्स नॉट योर नेचुरल थिंग यू नो ड्रॉप इट इफ यू कैन स्पीक स्लो इट्स ओके बट इफ नॉट इट्स गुड बी योर नेचुरल सर दैट्स वॉट यू रिक्वायर इन द इंटरव्यू दैट्स वॉट यू हैव टू शो एंड after interview i think that's it from my side so if you have any questions i'll be very happy to take please so did you make notes on this stuff it's every day you should read so optional ka i'll take a 15 minute session after this i think ma'am has some questions but i'll take gs ka bhi is pe questions lete pehle and then i'll come back to optional so coming to your question see uh, in the first month i started making notes from newspaper i used to make it on evernote कि रोज मैंने बैठ के आई यूज टू स्पेंड फोर्टी मिनट्स इन डूइंग दैट बट आफ्टर वन मंथ दे टर्न टू बल्कि दे आर मेनी फाइल्स इन द अवर नोट एंड इतना एक महीने के बाद रियलाइज हो गया कि मैं फिर से उस पर रिवाइज नहीं करने वाला हूँ सो आई गॉट कि मतलब आई डू सिंस आई एम नॉट सिंस आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू रिवाइज ऑन इट आई डेंट फाइंड इट वर्थ इट प्रिपेयरिंग दोज नोट्स सो आई ड्रॉप इट आफ्टर द फर्स्ट मंथ हाँ रीडर द न्यूज़ पेपर एंड द पी डी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव मेन्स थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव एंड द मंथली मैगजीन्स आई थिंक दीज आर मोर दैन इनफ सी सैट सी यूर आस्किंग द रॉन्ग पर्सन सी सी सैट आई रियली डेंट स्पेंड एनी ऑफ माई टाइम ऑन सी सैट सो दैट माइट बी वन ऑफ द एडवांटेजेस इन माई प्लानिंग और द फ्लॉस इन माई प्लानिंग बट यू नो आई आई सीन पीपल स्ट्रगलिंग सम ऑफ माई बैचमेट्स इवन स्ट्रगल विद सी सैट राइट नाउ बट आई थिंक प्रैक्टिसिंग मोर मार्क्स वुड हेल्प but i cannot advise on that aspect sir for foundation classroom not for gs so you, it's usually post we make one notes and we need uh, we need to make a short note on it see that's the whole, no no that's the whole thing no like once you start coaching i strongly believe you shouldn't depend on coaching coaching you may use it as a supplement if you want to but coaching is not your preparation your notes are the ones which you have studied those books and made from it so if you haven't you know if you just making notes from the coaching notes i don't think they are proper notes you read your resources you have your resources make notes from them that is your proper notes and then coaching ka jo bhi notes hai it is only a supplementary so it can supplement your actual notes but coaching se ek bar short note banao usko add karo proper notes mein you know it becomes a cumbersome process No, I was just no, no. This is one of the factors which I listed down. Maybe if I go back again, I would choose anthropology again because I got two ninety eight this year. So with the benefit of hindsight, maybe I would choose anthropology again. But that is one of the factors. Maybe I could pick up sociology also. I'm I'm interested equally in the same subject. I was thinking about psychology also, which also interests me. Maybe there is a grad subject mechanical engineering itself. So that is also there. So I had these options, but you know, the factors led me picking up anthropology. I don't regret it, but. in the interview you usually face those questions but there are standard answers for everything you can just prepare on yourself and it's a very it's a ball game that comes in a at, at a very later stage so when you're preparing for interview you can go through transcripts or some standard answers which you get from uh, various mocks and form your own answer so usually i made the answer ki i wanted to be multidisciplinary so i have picked out uh, i uh, stem subject as my graduation so i wanted to be multidisciplinary that's why i'm going for humanities as my optional so that was my standard answer it might be convincing it might not might not be convincing 
but everyone there knows ki you picked anthropology for marks only so if you don't want to lie about it you can just be honest there no you don't need to do that it's cool if you don't have yeah. you can just leave it blank See, it's a personality test you don't have to fake there i don't know matlab it doesn't help faking there you can be honest there don't just be too don't come off as rude but uh, whatever you do in your free time is a hobby if you don't have have a hobby it's cool you don't have to develop a hobby just for interview of course there would be many demotivation every time you don't reach your target you feel like you you did something you know there's something huge pending up or something and you know every time you miss your cousin marriage people will be like why are not coming it's only for a day or something but you know things like this happen you need to miss those important events you miss those cousins marriages every one of your friends is going on a trip people are people are in goa bhai you are in goa and studying so everything is demotivation but as i said you lose some battles but you have to win the war से अगेन वही मैकेनिकल कर दिया ना यू नो कि आज ये करना ही है बिकॉज यू हैव प्लान फॉर टुडे इफ यूर नॉट इफ यू डोंट हैव दैट डेली टारगेट अगर डिमोटिवेटेड है तो आज कुछ नहीं पढ़ोगे इट इज फाइन बट आपको पता भी होना चाहिए कि आज पढ़ा नहीं मैंने इतना बैकलॉग है सो वेन यू सी दैट यूर ऑटोमेटिकली गेट मोटिवेशन क्लियर करना है मेरे को वरना नहीं हो पाता बिकॉज यू नो वो लार्जर पिक्चर दिखता रहेगा हमेशा वेन यू हैव दी स्मॉलर टारगेट optional when you start reading optional you can take the mock test same same philosophy two weeks ha matlab initial agar optional se shuru kar rahe ho then if you are starting from optional you do this 50 60 answer writing ka jo bhi run hai you do this for optional only because you are reading that you are doing that ya to current affairs ka karo because you don't have gs ka ye and after one or two months you can start writing optional ka answer test and then after you start coming into gs you can start gs ka answer test so the whole point of doing this is developing the habit of skill of answer writing habit or structure of answer writing once you do this you can come on content that anyways you can do it also depends i my goal was to have or what i would suggest is having notes for everything history art and culture and everything but at some point spectrum it becomes too cumbersome to write uh, to write notes from spectrum also which i didn't do because i didn't have time that's it so it's again cost benefit i saw that if making notes i might not be able to complete spectrum so i thought i would leave notes and make notes on spectrum itself so it's a you know you have to manage those small small crisis management things so but uh, in general i would suggest ki having notes for everything which helps of course see, looking at the unpredictability of prelims right now i would say that is there you know i have seen people who prepare for lot of years with a great amount of knowledge but still not able to clear prelims because it's getting unpredictable it's good to have a backup option if you have i didn't have a backup option to be honest because i felt if you have a backup option you might get diverted to that backup option and not focus entirely on this so it's it's more of a personal decision also because if you think you can give you know three four proper years to upsc and your uh, society or your familial situation permits that your age everything permits that you can give you don't need to have a backup option but you if you think you may not be able to devote that time so i think it's good to have a backup option because mistake at any stage of the examination will wipe out an year at the minimum so that's it thank you thank you okay so i don't think optional is telugu literature the nak delsi atla problem em ledu telugu lo raayadam i don't think it's an issue kakapothe the thing is sources konja custom avachu and evaluation nen cheppinattu self evaluation cheskodam important because i don't think ki telugu english correct chese evaluators level telugu correct chese evaluators level same undakapovachu obviously ikkada dearth undi akkada dearth ledu there are many evaluators there there are no evaluators here so అది చూసుకోవడమే ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ దర్ ఇస్ అన్ ఇన్హరెంట్ డిసడ్వాంటేజ్ తెలుగులో రాయడం సో ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ దట్స్ అ ప్రాబ్లమ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ
see prelims the problem with prelims is with mains sectional wise tests and uh, full tests do not have a much of a difference because mains ka game alag hai but prelims there is a lot of difference because if you are strong in geography and geog geography ka sectional wise test diya hai i think your marks can shoot up to 120 130 par history likha hai to 60 hi aa pa so the thing is you will only get 60 so the thing is try in 50 at least maintain ki 40 year full length test that is how you will identify ki ha science and technology mein agar main guess maar raha hu to galat ho raha hai so i will not do that ya history mein agar guess maar raha hu to galat ho raha hai so i will not do that you can identify only while you are writing full test so i think 90 40 is a good number 80% No, no, no. See, th that's very difficult to manage, and it's almost almost impossible, I would say. But in my second attempt, I joined training in December 12th. By the time mains was over, so I only had to manage my interview during my training, which is more or less doable. I'm, I did it in the after hours of my training. So usually, if you had to do this entire exercise during training, I think it's very, very difficult, and I don't think I would be able to do that. If I write my marks, say so essay. This is twenty-one. This is twenty-two. I got one thirty-five here. I got one not three. You see, there is a thirty mark drop. While I did the same exercise and the same thing both the years. And GS one was one twelve this year or one not nine, not a big change. GS two one one five one twenty. So the thing is, in the GS two examination in twenty one, in two questions in the middle, I kind of got zoned out and wrote some vague stuff, which I think might have impacted this score. But more more or less both the years, the preparation for these two were the same. I don't know why this difference has come, but okay. Now this seventy eight eighty four. You know, this time I did not attempt the paper in a good way because there were a lot of memory-based questions like this 400 or uh, environment ka kuch bhi tha like world something India UK ka kuch treaty ka environment tha so I did not perform very well. I thought I performed very well in this examination, but still I got only 84. I couldn't you know, to to this day I didn't crack the code of this paper, but I thought mera itna hi hai. So now this is the game changer this year for me. 18 marks improvement in GS4. So this happened because I focused on keywords here. So I made the list of ethical issues which I showed you, and the short every word syllabus ka short notes and examples this year. Last year, मैंने नहीं किया था. Last year, I relied purely on lexicon and mock tests, ethical issues के लिए. This I made list of things, and I made sure कि list exhaustively मैं exam में लिख के आऊँगा. अगर इधर पंद्रह चीज़ मैं list कर रहा हूँ, तो मैं पंद्रह चीज़ कुछ तो कुछ context create करके मैं पंद्रह चीज़ लिख के ही आऊँगा. So I, you know, I listed down and इस बार ये भी है कि दिस वाज मोर अ वेरी लेंदी पेपर एंड पीपल हु कंप्लीटेड दिस पेपर स्कोर्ड वेल एंड ए कंप्लीटेड एथिक्स पेपर दिस ईयर सो लास्ट ईयर भी कंप्लीट किया था बट लास्ट ईयर इट वाज रिलेटिवली इजी दिस ईयर इट वाज डिफिकल्ट टू कंप्लीट द पेपर सो इधर कीवर्ड्स वाज अ चेंज एंड बिगेस्ट चेंज केम हियर 255 वाज माय ऑप्शनल लास्ट ईयर एंड 298 दिस ईयर सो 43 मार्क्स इधर ही था बिकॉज़ लास्ट ईयर आई वाज वेरी अंडर प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर ऑप्शनल आई गेव ओनली 3 वीक्स एज आई सेड देयर इज अ पॉजिटिव ऑफ टाइम But this year I gave four weeks to optional, and I uh, referred to topper's notes, my coaching notes, my notes, wrote more mocks, and uh, more or less I thought. Either he, ये था कि मतलब my content was much more enriched this year compared to last year, and PT was the same score on it for both the years. So this is the uh, game changer, ethics and optional. This. Year. Any more questions? Yes. अगर प्रीवियस देख लिया उस क्वेश्चन You go there and look at it. 
आपको पता था आपको पता होगा कि इसका स्ट्रक्चर ये है सो दैट नवल एग्जामिनेशन प्रीवियस में नहीं होगा सो आई रिलाइड मोस्टली ऑन कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट दो या तीन मार्क्स ले लो आई थिंक विजन का कुछ थर्टी मार्क्स का टेस्ट आता है एंड दूसरा भी इतना ही ले लो फोर्टी फिफ्टी का जो भी आएगा सो इट कम्स आउट अराउंड सेवेंटी एटी मार्क्स ट्वेंटी बिफोर द फिल्म्स इन पोस्ट फिल्म्स फोर्टी दोगे आई थिंक दैट थर्टीन वीक्स लाइक एट वीक्स का जी एस है इंटू फोर थर्टी टू एंड इसमें भी यू नीड फिफ्टी मार्क्स टोटल तीस विजन से मिल रहा तो बीस का ही से हाँ जस नेवर अटेम्प्टेड प्रीवियस ईयर या तो प्रीवियस ईयर यू कैन इनकॉर्पोरेट इन द आंसर राइटिंग पार्ट फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी ईयर्स फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी डेज वाला जो भी इनिशियल पार्ट था यू कैन इनकॉर्पोरेट प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन देर बिकॉज यू विल गेट रेडी रेडीमेड अवेलेबल क्वेश्चन ऑन द कंटेंट विच यू हैव रेड सो उधर से उठा सकते हो बट यूजली यू डोंट गिव अ सेपरेट मॉक फॉर दैट बिकॉज द सरप्राइज फैक्टर इज नॉट देयर बट यू इफ यू हैवेंट लुक डेट ट्वेंटी रिसेंट वाला मेन्स सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी टू वाला मेन्स यू कैन गिव अ मॉक बिकॉज वो सरप्राइज फैक्टर रहेगा बिकॉज यू हैवेंट सीन दस मॉक्स my notes i'll try to see it's in my home i'll if it if it's scan i'll just upload it on my blog or something okay uh, the last one by evaluating your answers on your own like what was the reference point see the reference is topper structures toppers ka answer copy is website pe hoga unka ek structure rahega aapka ek structure rahega compare these two things see where they have introduced schematics and where you haven't see where matlab same questions nahi hona chahiye like if you say the question is discuss This is the keyword. अभी discuss का keyword पे ये लोग क्या structure लिख रहा है and हम क्या लिख रहा है. What is our structure and what is their structure? What if it is evaluate? So what are they doing? What are we doing? So initially, you know, I used to write a lot many words in my answers. Then I used to go to topper copies. You know, that time Akshat Jain, or you know, they have very minimal words in their uh, answer. So they never used too many words. They used to use this schematics or you know. बस वर्ड लिख लिया या क्लॉज लिख लिया वही पॉइंट हो गया सो नेक्स्ट आई यू नो आई रिड्यूस द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्ड्स आई अंडरस्टूड कि वर्ड्स ज्यादा हो गया इसमें देन आई यूज टू राइट इन पैराग्राफ्स पहले आई यूज टू मतलब सब्जेक्ट टू आंसर ऐसे ही आता था मेरे को एंड देन ये लोग पॉइंट्स में लिखते थे सो आई थॉट कि हाँ आई नीड टू इनकॉर्पोरेट पॉइंट्स इन माई आंसर एंड देन स्कीमैटिक्स दे यूज टू यूज दिस टाइप ऑफ स्कीमैटिक्स आई वॉज नॉट दैट क्रिएट टू तो मैंने सेट स्कीमैटिक्स लिख लिया एंड वही लिखता था मैंने सो यू नो दीज थिंग्स यू कंपेयर द स्ट्रक्चर नॉट द कंटेंट because content might be different from their year your year for the question you are writing and they are writing if you get the same question it's well and good but if you are not getting the same question <coughs> it's good to compare the structures there is a newspaper page what is what otherwise nice in the current sentence that see newspapers play an important role because while reading editorials only you know how to articulate your answer because you can throw those keywords or those points and stuff so newspaper reading is very important but you don't have to focus too much on it that you are preparing notes from it as i have told already so notes you can just leave it you don't have to prepare notes from a newspaper if you are making it well and good if it's concise and you are able to revise it it's good but if you if you're not able to do that you don't have to fret about it magazines are well and good to come for the compilation but newspaper i think it gives an overall view i think it's it gives a good you know that uh, aspirant wala feel when you read newspaper ki ha you're doing something important so that is there in newspaper प्रीलिम्स का जो भी रन नब्बे दिन का है दैट इज फॉर रिविजन यू आर नॉट रीडिंग एनीथिंग न्यू इन दैट प्रीलिम्स रन प्रीलिम्स का थ्री मंथ्स वर्स फॉर रिविजन मेंस रन जो भी तीन महीना दैट वाज फॉर रिविजन इन द मेंस वाला रन और प्रीलिम्स वाला रन यू आर नॉट पिकिंग अ न्यू बुक क्योंकि फर्स्ट महीने में यू आर एग्जॉस्टिंग योर रिसोर्स लिस्ट एंड नोट्स उसके बाद नोट्स ही पढ़ रहे हो प्रीलिम्स वाला रन में एंड मेंस वाला रन में सो दोस फेजेस आर फॉर रिविजन यू आर गेटिंग टू रिविजंस बिफोर योर मेंस वन फॉर प्रीलिम्स वन फॉर मेंस सो दैट वाज माय रिविजन टाइम So I didn't do na like I didn't prepare. I my mains completed in September and I joined in December. So I only prepared for interview during my second attempt. If I prepared during my training, I would have done, I wouldn't have done that because I wouldn't either you sacrifice your training and other stuff and sit for UPSC for 
आफ्टर फाइव ओ क्लाक सिट फॉर सिक्स आवर्स ट्रेड फॉर यू पी एस सी या तो ट्रेनिंग अच्छे से करो देर इज ओनली टू ऑप्शन देर सो आई आई वुड प्रॉब्ली हैव प्रायोरिटाइज ट्रेनिंग इफ आई हैव टू डू दैट दैट्स इट We're preparing. What are the major problems? Why you prepare? Problems. You know, it's more personal. These problems. You know, it depends on you what you feel problems are. So usually demotivation is a problem. You know, the process itself is so lengthy that you know you wouldn't see immediate results. So mock tests are one way to you know do that because I used to see a result after two weeks. Whether I'm doing good or not, I used to get good marks. I used to feel happy. Kya hai kuch toh hai. So you know, these are the small demotivation. These things you get more distractions. You know, you miss these things. You miss you miss fun and all. You're sitting it, and you also have this feeling that I'm doing it wrong and stuff like that. And these are every aspirant goes through these phases. But the thing is, you need to never forget your goal. That's the thing. Sir, did you go through things when you missed your motivation? See, usually, usually my hobbies were watching football or any sports, which I used to do. whenever i miss motivation or whenever i feel ki i get burned out or something i used to go for an outing in delhi or something every sa- every second half of the sunday i used to go for an outing i didn't uh, read in any sundays so morning kuch time pass kar diya ya kuch current affairs dekh liya and sham ko bahar ja ke ghuma so this you know you'll have a refresher every week then you don't feel demotivated often but usually as i said demotivation occurs when you don't see the results so when you have a constant reference point and results you don't feel the demotivation You only feel that you are only going up. Can you please tell how you prepare for reading comprehension and CSAT? I did not prepare for CSAT. I'm sorry. Can you say how you do CSAT? No, I'm very bad at reading comprehensions. In maths, out of sixty, I used to solve fifty-seven or fifty-eight, right? In reading comprehensions, I used to get only eight or ten, right? So. It might be I heard a lot about it, but I don't have any strategy for comprehension because I never got to that point. So this year, this year, we are doing mostly picks. So how do you? Do you need eliminating tricks or you don't need elimination tricks? Actually, you face the almost the pattern. The pattern has been changed. I have seen these questions one pair, two pair, wala. Which last year also I got some five or ten questions of these one pair, two pair. But uh, you know. when the pattern changes you only have to adapt to it you can do nothing so write more mock tests on this level one pair two pair levels see if you are able to guess it correctly or not if you are not able to write you know solve those questions so or agar 40 questions the usme one pair two pair wala solve only 10 or usme and baki 60 mein acche se concentrate kar lo so that should be the strategy matlab so strategy hamesha pattern pe hi depend karta hai so that is why i did not have a strict attempted number of questions also unless i knew ke paper is easy hai so in once you start writing mocks you need to start giving number of mocks you'll understand you'll go to the end for this kya pata hota hai ki matlab ye karna hai ye nahi karna for example in my case i used to skip any guessing of medieval history but i was very good at guessing in ancient history uska logic nahi pata tha mere ko but i knew ki ancient question ancient history ka guesses correct ho raha hai gut feeling correct ho raha hai medieval ka nahi ho raha so i used to implement that in the final also so you need to form these tricks and then work upon them Short notes, like, okay, so, uh, on everyone. Uh, so, all the subjects for your can we make short notes on, uh, on? keyboards? There are keyboards in the syllabus. In GS. Yeah, GS. Uh, see, GS. Ah, see, GS. Me like your GS syllabus itself is a short note on the keyword, because so you, notes on that, you can your notes. See, your notes are like that, but see the notes you're making from your resource list. itself is a kind of every word short note on the short note on the every word of the syllabus because cyclonogenesis hai to uska cyclone ka aapka hai geography mein ek part kahi na kahi so the thing is ethics ka aisa defined kuch you don't have a resource and ethics ka it's a more game of keywords i'm saying ki ethics mein attitude ka definition ya aptitude ka definition pe bahut zyada game hota hai because that's what fetches you marks in ethics but gs mein aisa nahi hai gs mein it is content proper concept pata hona chahiye ethics mein aisa there is no defined concept That is why we are going, running around the thing. Ki, मतलब ये definition पकड़ो, example पकड़ो, keyword पकड़ो. But GS में you have a defined content, ना? So you don't have to. If you want to make, you can make. जैसे geography में resources वाला part है last में. Uh, 
लास्ट सिलेबस में लास्ट कॉलम वही है कि वेरियस रिसोर्स लोकेशन एंड ऑल तो उसका कर सकते हो बिकॉज देर सम सुनामी करके दस ग्यारह वर्ड दिया है उसमें दस ग्यारह वर्ड का यू कैन हैव अ डेफिनेशन कंटेंट एग्जाम्पल रिसेंट एग्जाम्पल्स एंड मिटिगेशन फैक्टर्स यही तो चाहिए यू कैन हैव दैट बट डू इट यू नो कॉस्ट बेनिफिट अगेन इफ यू पुटिंग एफर्ट यू नीड टू गेट द रिवॉर्ड ऑल्सो सब में करना मतलब ये नहीं है इट्स नॉट वर्थ इट 